I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Tiverton Town Council, Tuesday, November 12th, 2019. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councillor Perry. Present. Councillor Edwards. Present. Councillor Carp. Present. Councillor DiMedeiros. Present. President Hilton. Present. Councillor Cook. Present. Councillor Driggs. Present. The consent agenda. Item A, approval of town council minutes, October 21, 2019, special meeting and October 28, 2019, executive session. B, acknowledgement. Receipt of minutes from boards and commissions committees. One set of minutes from the Tiverton Prevention Coalition. One set from the Tiverton Open Space Commission. Three from the Planning Board and one from the Cemetery Commission. Acknowledge receipt of reports. Number one, the Town Administrator Police and Fire Department Overtime Reports. Number two, Town Administrator Department Monthly Reports, October 2019. Item D, acknowledge receipt of correspondence. Town of Johnston. Resolution of the Town Council regard, regarding E-911 services and item E, approval of tax assessor abatements. Would anyone like to pull any items from the consent agenda? I would. I'd like to pull A-2, executive session, and B-3, planning board. Anyone else? Madam President. Motion to approve the remainder of the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Madam President. Yes, John. I'd like to make a motion to take, uh, to waive council policy and take the items Councilor Cook pulled off the consent agenda out of order and now. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? I hear what he said. We're, we're going to take them. Take we're going to take them now. now. Oh, okay. Yep. If you're ready. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Councillor Cook. Geo, is it difficult to talk about executive sessions in the public? The minutes. I'm talking about the open part. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. October 28th, executive session. Uh, reason for session was questionable. Open session, it says, Councilor Edwards' motion to direct the solicitor and town administrator to negotiate a contract with West Place Kennel. I was wondering if the violation of what was cited as reason for executive session, which is potential litigation, doesn't say anything about adding this new information, which also talks about what we talked about in executive session, which is kind of, kind of weird. Also, um, there's a motion with no second. I mean, it's a motion. I don't know what that's all about. And it's not on the agenda anywhere uh, to discuss a negotiation for a contract with West Place. And I'm beginning to wonder if, if this even should have been an executive session. I think the whole thing should have been an open session so that people could know what was going on, but that's my opinion um, because of what occurred during this, this session. I was unhappy as to what went on in it, how it happened, and anyway, what do you have to say, solicitor? Anything at all? Um, you know, I don't certainly want to discuss anything that was in executive session. I think as a, a practical matter, I think you, you make a fair point that, that the, the minutes, well, I guess I have two, two thoughts. One is that in the executive session minutes, we have a motion that was outside of executive session. So I think really that would be more appropriate in the meeting minutes that we don't have in front of us yet. 
uh, because once you leave executive session, you're no longer looking at the executive session minutes. So I don't think that line that Council Edwards uh, motioned to direct, I don't think that's actually appropriate on here. I think there should be an adjournment of executive session, and then that should stop, and then anything that's discussed, including the adjournment motion that's below, should show up in the open <coughs> me meeting minutes. So that, that just as a practical matter for the clerk, I think that's the, the better way to do the minutes. To, to Councillor Cook's point on that motion, I, I think that's right. It, it, there was a motion. I don't see any second. I don't see any vote. So I'm, I'm assuming it just died on the vine. That can be reflected in the regular minutes. If that was the case, I wasn't here. So no. The, so just if I may clarify for the solicitor, we acted under advice of the assistant solicitor, and we followed his his direction as far as to when to make the motion and so on and so forth. So. I just yeah. want to make sure that that's on the record that it was under that's advice fine. of counsel. I, I, yeah. I just, but the, the, these minutes don't reflect that, so I'm just going off what and it I says here. And I seconded that motion, that, that and I'm not sure why that's that's not reflective in here. Yeah, so that would probably need a correction uh, before, not before these are approved. I, I, for today, I would take that and the adjournment motion off of this, and then you can approve it without those two things. I would direct the clerk to include whatever the accurate line is on the meeting minutes that you'll probably consider next time you meet for the open session. Um, but then my only other question is, is um, if you had a, a motion with a vote for something that wasn't um, on the agenda, did you move also move to, to add that to the agenda? Because that would have been necessary in order to have that. Again, vote. acting under advice of the assistant solicitor, you'd have to take that up with him. Yeah, I, can, I can certainly take it up with him, and maybe before the next meeting, I can clarify as to, as to what his thoughts that's are on that. I, I don't think. For tonight's purposes, it doesn't matter because you're you're going to take it off this. It's not it's not appropriately on these minutes. I I'm, I don't know what his theory would be for, for how we do that without having it on the agenda. Yeah, I mean, again, you can like I said, you should, I think you should take that up with him, and I will. You know, yeah, happy that, that that would probably help clarify things, and that way, at least the general public understands that we're not doing something we shouldn't be doing. No, no, no I, we're I taking it under advice of counsel. I, I, I want to make sure that that's clear. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you you know, there's no there's no sense that it wasn't out and 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 you know. The record was made. It was just the record, made in the wrong spot. The, well, well, potentially it was. You also might want to speak with the solicitor about the nature of the discussion um, before you. Uh, I understand. Determine. Whether no, no. I uh, believe me. I'm, I'm making no determinations. I, I, I think that now that I understand the context, I know what I can ask him. But I, I, again, I just for tonight's purposes, I don't think. What, whatever that context is, that that vote outside of executive session should should not be on these minutes. It should be on the open session minutes. And but just to be clear, our our I believe our past practice has always been to include any votes that were taken because we don't take votes in executive session. We have to take the votes in public. That traditionally, this is new. <coughs> our minutes have always been done this way. The, any votes that were taken relevant to rele relevant to executive session, which we have to take in public when we come out of the room and take them here, they've traditionally always been at the end of the, the executive session. I, I understand. I just I, and I'm not saying that anyone would, would hold, hold you to a fault for that. I just think that, that from the way I view it, I think having those in the open session minutes since it was an open session vote would be would be more accurate. Madam President. Yes, John. If I could just add one more item. Um, for future, if we have questions on minutes like this and it's a crossover between the assistant solicitor and, and now um, our town solicitor being here, it would be helpful in advance if, uh, if maybe Councillor Cook or whomever brings them off of, the, um, off of the agenda would speak to the solicitor or give them a heads up that it was coming. So at least that way our solicitor can be prepared for the discussion. She, she, she did mention that to me. She called and mentioned the, the issue and, and I, I didn't understand the, the other counselor's opinion on this, and of course, I didn't want to create a rolling quorum by having that conversation with with multiple parties. But um, I, she, she did actually give me a heads up that this was going to be a concern of hers. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Cook. Your next item. <laughs> All right, um, going through the uh, planning board uh, minutes. Just wanted to make just to read the. Uh, seems to be some confusion as to who did what when for the solar ordinance. It says the town council on March 12th, 2018 adopted Article 24, solar photovoltaic system development 
And on November 26, 2018, the town council, the new town council had to repeal the ordinance and requested the planning board to redraft the article of, of, of 24. Um, I just want to make, make it clear that it's the planning board's responsibility to, to put forth a solar ordinance. And two, two particular people got blamed for the whole thing, and I just don't think that was right. So it is a matter of record. Anyway, to move on, I just wanted to make, looking through this, I just wanted to make sure that we have a heads up for just. Madam President, yes. if I could ask for some clarification, Councillor Cook. What's the matter? Where in, uh, in that paragraph is there blame assigned to somebody? What are you talking about here? Yeah, you just. It isn't in here. It is not in here? I don't think so. So it's not pertinent to the discussion. I'm just con con yeah, I'm curious because you just said that some that two people were blamed for something, and it's not yeah, reflected so in what you just far, what you just read. Two, two former, there were seven of us, but two former councilors were blamed for not having a solar ordinance. We would all be responsible for that. But it's not a matter of record because it's not mentioned in these minutes, correct? Correct. I'm, I'm just trying to follow along with the discussion. That's all. I think she's just, if I may speak. I think by inference, she is just making clear that there had been a solar ordinance. It was rescinded by the new town council, but at that time it was put into the planning board to come up with a solution, and that's all that's happened. And and she's just stating that as a fact. So there's and there's think, no inaccuracies in these minutes. I'm just I want to make sure I'm following it, the discussion. She the has accuracy is, is who was blamed for not having a solar yeah. ordinance. But, but where where saying. in the minutes is that is there blame? Hold on a second. But Mrs. Cook, we're, we're simply reviewing the, the planning board's minutes. If there's an inaccuracy in these minutes, then that's what you can point that out. But other than that, that's what we're doing. We're either accepting these minutes as they're written or we're not accepting these minutes as they're written. Okay. I also want to go okay. over. I just want to make sure that... Um, just sort of a heads up that it says um, that we there's a recommendation from Mrs. Eva that we might have a workshop with the town council before the public hearing. I just wanted to give a heads up on that. And and at that time, I guess we can discuss some of the other things I found uh, on 1022 meeting. Um, and that's all I wanted to bring. Well, I think one of the issues, uh, as I recall yeah. reading also, that they the planning board specifically indicated that it's going to be the town council that they're going to look to for guidance for the amount of acreage that could be used. That's in their minutes. So I think um, cap. we just wanted to give a heads up that this may be something that the town council is going to have to think about. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank in, you. in that case, do I have a motion to accept items? Uh, a two item A2 and B3. So moved. Second. Second and discussion? Yes, John. Um, given the inconsistencies on the executive uh, committee minute or the executive session minutes, should we not accept that today, Mr. Solicitor? You can accept it with those two lines. Stricken. Right. I was just going to say. Okay. I just want to make sure that's reflected in the motion. I have a motion to second. All in favor? I don't believe we had anybody sign up for the public forum, so we'll go on to public presentations, announcements, and comments. Tax Assessor Dave Robert, brief overview of the 2020 full revaluation. Good evening, Mr. Good evening Town Council. Um, yes, very brief. So uh, a couple weeks ago, the Town Council uh, approved awarding the contract to Northeast Revaluation Company. Uh, they do have a contract that um, they presented to the town um, that has been forwarded uh, to the town solicitor. He has reviewed that, uh, sent it back to me with uh, some corrections and updates. I provided that copy to the revaluation company. They are fine with that, so they're ready to sign. The town will end up signing. Um, the work is going to begin tomorrow, so they are going to be out in the field starting tomorrow. They are going to be um, in the Fogland Beach Shore Road area. <coughs> Residents and the town council um, 
They will be updated on a weekly basis through the website. On the website, I'm going to have information as far as where the data collectors will be, and I'm also going to have an image uh, utilized in our GIS database of the, of the area that will, they will be in. All of the data collectors, uh, they presented me with a list of their uh, information regarding name, motor vehicle, license plate. Uh, if they have multiple cars, if there's a spouse and they want to use a different car, all of those vehicles are being registered with the police department. So if any resident has a question, they can contact my office directly or contact the police department and they will have a listing there of the people out in the field. Um, the gentlemen that are working on the project, I've actually known for several years, so I can speak for their professionalism. Um, they will be going door to door, knocking, uh, looking for information as far as interior information and exterior. They will walk around the houses, take measurements. Um, the revaluation is expected as far as the data collection portion is to uh, probably last into May or June of next year. Uh, they are going to work uh, from the southern portion of town to the northern. Um, and again, if anyone has questions, they can always contact my office. Madam President? Yes, John. Just one question for the assessor. Um, what is the actual process for them? Because I'm assuming they're going to have to gain entry into the house. Um, is there going to be advanced notification of the days that they're going to be in a specific area or, or going to a specific residence, or are they just going to hope for luck of the draw when they knock on somebody's door? Luck of the draw. So the process will be that they will go into a neighborhood. Again, I will uh, update the website as far as what areas they should be in. They will uh, go to the door, knock on the door. If someone's there, they'll explain exactly why they're there, explain the process. If no one is home, they are going to leave behind a uh, notation for them to give the data collector or the revaluation company a phone call to schedule an inspection. Um, and also, it's important to note that all of the data collectors that's out in the field that's going to be representing Northeast Appraisal, they're wearing red jackets or sweaters. So they're easily identifiable. Um, so if you see someone walking around with a red jacket, they're part of the crew. Um, in addition to the crew, um, just so the residents know, uh, once the data collectors are in a particular area, a field reviewer will drive by each of the homes just to make sure that when the data collector submits that information to the reviewer, um, they'll drive on by to make sure that everything seems accurate at that point. Thank you. Dave, do they carry identification with them? They do. It's a photo ID that has the town logo on it and their information as far as their name and that they're working for a Northeast appraisal. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Robert. Thank you. Uh, next up, Stu Gilfillan of the Recreation Commission. Uh, newly elected chair of the Recreation Commission, I believe, as well as the chair of the Town Farm Playground Committee. Yeah, I get all, all the fun. So, um, town Council, um, just so you're aware, I'll be back up in front of you at the next meeting. Um, we have a public session um, that we've promoted for Thursday at the library from 6 to 8. Um, so we're collecting information that will pretty much, we'll, we'll keep the surveys open a little bit beyond that, but that's our last major uh, information selection opportunity and feedback opportunity. Um, so I'll be back up in front of you uh, at the next town council meeting with a uh, application, a copy of the grant to review. Um, you'll get it as part of your packet and your backup at that time. So that's why you don't have more at the moment. Um, I do have some sort of high level information, but um, wanted to give kind of a rundown on where we're at and what we're going through and answer any questions you may have. So on September 30th, the uh, town council ad created the committee, uh, the town farm recreation committee, and then we kind of jumped into it right from there. We've been meeting about every two weeks since then, um, which in addition to other meetings, we've got some great volunteers, so scheduling has been fun. Um, I do want to extend just a quick thanks to the town staff, Jan and Rick and the others. Those guys have been um, phenomenal at helping us stay on the straight and narrow and give feedback where need be. And uh, we're really fortunate with the committee that we have. 
We sent out two different surveys. One was for the playgrounds. Um, so if you look at Town Farm where the existing playground footprint is, uh, we're gonna look to replace that with another playground um, with multiple sets of resources for both younger and older children. On the other end of the playground, right next to where the uh, tennis courts are, there's a perception out there that we could potentially replace that with a fitness park, um, something that's happened in a lot of different communities. So we did two different surveys to gauge feedback from people on both. Um, for the playground survey that went out first, it went to all the PTOs, it went up on social media, uh, went out through a number of different channels. We had 339 submissions to that. Um, and just as a data point, the number one selection for theme was a forest or a nature type theme from uh, residents. On the fitness park side, we've had 92 respondents. On the, the digital one, we have a number of print surveys that we have not accounted for. We will include those as well before we, we finish with the data. Um, and an interesting data point, again, 81% of people said that they would use Town Farm, farm more if there was a fitness park. So just interesting anecdotal information um, from the data points from people. I, I will happily share, and we'll bring it on Thursday, all of the info um, that has been collected and all of the individual responses. Um, my personal favorite so far was the, the individual who suggested that we should add a beer garden to the playground. Um, <laughs> We're not adding a, a beer garden. Um, so there is a public forum at the library on the 14th this Thursday. Um, we've invited Andrew Wade, who is the recreation director in Jamestown, to come speak. Anybody that's seen what Jamestown did, um, it's one of, if not the best playgrounds in the state. Uh, in addition to that, Andrew is on the review committee for the DEM grants and has been providing insight and um, a lot of great feedback along the way. So he is going to come and present what their process was like. Um, it'll give him an opportunity to see our process firsthand. Um, and he's been giving us feedback, like I said, uh, pretty regularly. Uh, we'll also have a first shot at renderings based on the feedback that we do have, fully acknowledging that it will change. But um, we're firm believers that if people can see what we're potentially doing, it's easier to conceptualize. So we're taking the feedback that we have and trying to give them something to look at. Um, as we move forward, the grant is due December 11th at um, 3 p.m. Nobody's counting. Um, there are a couple different types of grants that the DM offers. The one that we're targeting is the Large Recreational Development Grant. That's uh, up to a $400,000 grant with a 20% match. Um, in the budget currently, there is $50,000 for Town Farm. Um, so we would need to come up with an additional 30,000 in VIK. Um, we, we feel confident we can do that. We have started looking into, um, through a couple different conversations, how we could handle the remaining portion of it. Some of it can be done as in kind, some of it can through sponsorship. Um, we actually have a, had a $3,000 contribution from Tiverton Power that already came in through Town's channel. So um, people, without us really doing a big push, are already starting to get behind this. We're, we're excited about what this will bring. Um, action items, um, we've been playing email tag with uh, the Arts Council. Uh, do you want to connect with them? Uh, there was a recommendation made um, by a former counselor to connect with them, and it made sense to follow up on that. We need to do a, a full site survey. Um, uh, Rick and I have been discussing how best to do that. Um, and we do need to take a look at, in the long term, how are we going to come up with the right uh, vendor for this project, so an RFP to, to make sure we get the right equipment and it goes through all the proper channels. So. Um, we're trying to make sure we check all the boxes here um, and we, we follow the proper process. Um, really pleased with the way that we're moving. It is a very tight timeline for what we're trying to do, but we, we feel confident in what we're, we're likely to accomplish. So, questions? What, is there anything we can do to be of assistance? More coffee? <laughs> all right. Um, no, I think as, as and I, like I said, I will circulate information. Um, we'll have it after the Thursday meeting. If people have suggestions, feedback, if you can attend that meeting on Thursday, I would welcome having anybody there um, just to observe. Um, you know, I, I think for us, we, we really want to be as transparent, as open as possible. This is something that it's a community project, um, and we want to make sure that the community is heard. I, um, I, I, something's sticking in my, <coughs> excuse me, stick, I have a cold. Something's, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. sticking in my mind that prior to submitting the grant mm -hmm. there has to be a public hearing put on by the town council is that factored into this timeline and stuff yes okay. yeah so okay. that's part of the reason I'm going to be coming back to you as well um, okay. but at this particular time we wanted to make sure we had a dedicated mm -hmm. public session we're giving a full hour for feedback I didn't think that was appropriate to do here um, but again at the next opportunity before we have to submit we'll come back to you I so. think as I recall it was after you had the grant prepared mm -hmm. you come before the town council mm -hmm. and it gets reviewed and stuff right correct yep. okay thank yep. you madam president Renee Jones has a question 
I know you can't see it because of the column. Sure. I just had a quick question on um, the occupational therapist for kids. I was just mm -hmm. wondering, um, what does Jamestown do for accessibility for the handicapped? So they do have some equipment that is specifically accessible. If you go down there, there's a couple of swings that are set up that way, and there are a couple other places. Um, but I'd invite you to come Thursday and ask Andrew directly, too. Oh, yep. And I have a copy. If you're interested, I have a copy of the plan. No, and, and it's, it's a very good one. It is accounted for in um, the survey. If anybody has not taken the survey, they're both posted on the town hall website. Um, and there are specific pieces of equipment as well as open-ended responses that we included. So. so just to clarify, Stu, when you're back, we will be having a public hearing for this mm -hmm. um, and a vote. And you will need the minutes from the public hearing as part of the submission. And the vote as part of the submission for the grant. Mm -hmm. yep. That's correct. Um, I, I would also just add, uh, Jan makes a good point, um, or mentioned, just mentioned something to me. If, if the council does participate in other forums, uh, please recall that you can't um, uh, participate as the council. Uh, don't, don't roll into quorum issues or anything like that. I, I would advise to observe um, and save your commentary for your public hearing. We've done this before with the beach and, and um, other things. Yeah, and I, I would just offer, it's interesting, as we've looked at the, the grant, when the notice went out for the grant, the image that they used was actually Grinnell's. So I think that's worth noting here, just as a reference point. Thank you, Stu. Thanks, guys. And thank, thank you, you and to your committee for all your hard work. I know that it's a short time frame, and, time frame and you're working really diligently. On to public hearings advertised. Uh, public hearing approval of proposed ordinance amendment addition of Article 3, Businesses, Chapter 22, Section 22, allowing consent agenda approval for certain license renewals. Um, Madam Clerk is not here this evening. Jeannie, are you wanting to take this one? Or do you think we could? Or Geo? I, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to weigh in if, if Jeannie would prefer. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've talked about this uh, two meetings ago. Um, uh, I, I've had a chance to review again, and, and I'm comfortable with the, the concept. I think this is consistent, as Jan would, uh, has pointed out previously, with uh, a sort of a lean process and a way to make the town government more efficient. I think that's uh, admirable. Um, my only comment is a, is a practical one. It should not uh, hold up anything, but um, as a matter of uh, just form, uh, I, I'm adverse to asterisks in ordinances. Um, I saw that. Uh, and, and so I would just suggest, I don't believe this requires anything other than uh, a ministerial change when the clerk passes this forward, uh, but simply to put the, the asterisk line on the very bottom up after the word is, the town clerk is, and then insert that, and then authorize. Um, that way it's in the body of the ordinance and not separated okay. out. It's hard to read, it's hard to find. People can get confused uh, reading a code book uh, with something set out like that. Madam President, I have a question too for, for Gio. I, I'm concerned um, that the town clerk, so somebody comes in for a renewal, and how can we be assured that the, that the licensee is in compliance with all ap applicable provisions of state and local law and has not been issued a warning or subject to a show cause? It, would it be advisable that the licensee should have to give an affidavit under penalty of perjury that both those facts are true so that it doesn't fall on the doesn't town mean, clerk to ascertain this? Well, well, I think the clerk can, can create a form that would include something like that, and that's, that's I think that's essential, because fine. otherwise, how's the town so, clerk going to make well, this what decision? I think, because I think, well, I think the clerk would, would be the one that would have noticed on a show cause hearing. I, mean, I think the clerk's involved in that. So I don't, I don't think that's the difficult a difficult one. Okay. Um, the provisions of state and local law pertaining to the license, those um, tend to be enumerated in the in the authorizing legislation. So the clerk, you know, even today for a, a liquor license renewal, we'll get a tax good standing, we'll get a corporate good standing, we'll do all the things that that lays out. And I think clerks around the state are generally familiar with what that checklist is, um, and 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 does that today when she brings you when she brings you items for votes. I was just going to say that I think Nancy does all of this before bringing it to us anyway. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, I think that's this a great is nothing point. New. I, I don't think that okay. changes anything necessarily. Right. It, it, you're right; it is a, a potential minefield, but it doesn't change anything compared to what you have today. Right. Huh. All right. I think if I'm not mistaken, Jan, eventually as we move to this lean program, there is a 
there is an electronic tracking of all of these things. In the interim, for now, um, when they do license renewals in the office, you know, there's a folder and, and everybody's associated papers um, as well as their approvals. In other words, if the police chief doesn't have a problem, the fire chief doesn't have a problem, if this license is that, that license. So, so for now, it's somewhat paper-based, but I believe the goal is eventually that this will become electronic. Jan, speak up on that. That's correct, and one of the results will be that you actually more likely will have the results earlier rather than later, and you'll have fewer instances where you have this subject to all legal requirements because all the legal requirements will have been checked off by then, which is made a lot easier through the electronic system. Now, prior to the electronic system, such as the one that we're using in the building office, prior to that being adopted, the plan is actually to, to start doing more or less the same with emails, so that an application comes in, it automatically gets emailed to the various departments that need to check. And so there is, in a way, more attention being paid to that getting done in a timely fashion uh, than we currently can. Okay. I think the other thing to keep in mind about this and, and, and uh, is that we always, as the council, while we're approving this on the consent agenda, we could ask for it to be presented in a format that had, you know, check marks next to it or something so that we could see that, you know, everything that they're supposed to have is there rather than just the list of names, um, rather than getting all the individual pieces of paper for every single. I think the idea ultimately is that you wouldn't get a whole packet with all kinds of, but you would have one uh, application. Um, and there can be further discussion whether that should have attached to it a checklist with all the checks or whether all of us get very good at just going online and checking it out because it's right there and everybody can check it. I just have one concern. Um, during this process, of, of the renewals of all the businesses in town. It, you know, it says here we wouldn't have a public hearing if this was done, and uh, the public hearing, um, I don't know if that's such a good idea to, to uh, circumvent that. I think it, it's sort of an announcement, like hear ye, hear ye, these businesses are coming uh, for renewal, um, it's on the agenda. People can come speak if, if there's a problem with it that maybe hasn't been reported, and they have a right to speak about a business in, in a public forum. So this would take that away, because it wouldn't be on the agenda. How would that be done? Well, there's not, there's not a public hearing necessarily for license renewals now. It shows up on the agenda, but it's not something because they're renewals that's listed as a, as a public hearing. There, it, it, I mean, they're just on the agenda. Um, I don't know. I think there was a like public hearing, are they not? Well, that you can uh, get up and say I, something. I mean, I suppose if if the council wanted to let people speak, they could. But it's not it's not a requirement. And in past, we haven't had a public hearing or asked the public to get up and speak. We simply read the long list of names. I mean when we do these renewals every year, there's batches and batches of them. We read the long list of names. Um, and Nancy you know, has an enormously thick packet for us with all the, the backup data. It, they would be on the consent agenda. We would individually as counselors certainly have the ability if we had a concern of any one of them to you know, take something off of the consent agenda or if, if, a, if you know, a member of the public brought something forward. Um, and had an issue, we could certainly do that. I think that Nancy's objective in this was simply to limit that extraordinary amount of paper that comes with these annual renewals every year, um, as well as you know speed up our process so that we're not reading through you know an hour and a half's worth of names to do license renewals that are are very routine, and that the town clerk's office has already been through all of the, the necessary process to ensure that their licenses can be granted. Well, I I do understand that, but um, I just I just think it gives the public uh, a list of them. They're allowed to get up for the public to be able to say something. If they don't, if if there isn't a problem, there isn't a problem. But 
for us to have a list of it, would the public know that would it, it's not on the agenda? Would it be on it, the agenda? It would appear on the consent agenda. Consent agenda. So the, the names will all be, appear on the agenda. It will, they'll just be on the consent agenda. So we would just say we accept the consent agenda as is, or, or unless, allow people to... Unless the unless, unless the council member had a concern, they could raise it, like we've done before. But I'm talking about the public. Well, I mean, what if the public has a concern that we don't know about? Don, they could always put it on the public forum, so when they see right, this, they so when they right. see these li this list, they could always put it on the list that they have a concern with this business and would like to speak about it. And then when the president sees this list, make sure that that the no, that I'm just trying to protect yeah, the public's yeah, rights. Yeah, but that so. would be a way to do it. So if Trish sees a list and they have a name of a business, Trish could pull that off the consent agenda so people could speak well, I would, about it at the public forum. I would like that to be part of the procedure that um, there's definitely a list that, that the public can look at, uh, actually put their name on a piece of paper to speak on that business. I, I don't want that to be <coughs> circumvented. I think it's important for the public to have input on the businesses in town. Gio, isn't, isn't there a list that people can sign up before the meeting to yeah, speak? And I think it's worth just re reinforcing number five, number five in, the, in the ordinance that, that this requires, as written, it requires that the town clerk provide a list of licenses being issued on a council agenda. So so Nancy or, or Jeannie or whoever, whomever it is uh, will have to make a very, you know, might be three pages of, of agenda items, but those will all show up and the public will have a chance for however many hours they have notice of the agenda to see all those names. And if they have a concern with, you know, somebody's pizza parlor or whatever it might be, um, they'll, they'll have seen that name up, up in front of the council. Now, it'll all be consent and it won't come up unless they, they go out of their way to, to suggest to a council that there's a concern. Uh, but they will, they will have seen it in a public notice. Denise. Um, should we add something to five that, um, the, um, if something to that effect, if the public has concerns, they may put um, this business on the public forum just so the public knows that in this procedure that that's how it could be done. So it'll be on the consent agenda, listed on the consent agenda. And if uh, anyone from the public has concerns, they could put that on. Um, you, you could just add a, a comma after the word decision, uh, sorry, after the word review in number five uh, and say uh, to allow for council review, comma, and for potential public input. Does that sound good, Donna? Yeah, I just want to make sure I protect the public to, to have their say about a business. Thank you. Madam President? Yes, John. <clears throat> um, well, I, I just have two very quick points. Number one, I think it'd be great for us to get to the public hearing portion of this discussion. And number two, um, as far and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Solicitor, but if a you know <laughs> resident has an issue with a business, there's nothing preventing them from coming in front of this council at any meeting to bring that to our attention or bringing it to the attention of the clerk prior to the, the license being renewed. I mean, we know when they happen every single year. So, you know, I don't think that making this a public forum that's going to drag on ad nauseum is really going to change anything. It, the public still has the right to come in front of this council and petition this body as its representative body. I, I get what you're saying, Councilor, but I just want to make sure that there's something in place where they can sign something. If, if no one signs anything, I guess it's not a problem, but there would, should be something for them that they feel that they get up and, and speak because <laughs> it's really not a hearing with this type of a, a system. So if they want to put their name on something to speak on a business, then so be it. But you don't necessarily, it would be nice that we let people get up, but you don't necessarily, if it's not a hearing, have someone get up and just speak. Well, let me ask one follow-up question for the solicitor then. In the event, hypothetically, you know, Joe's Pizza Parlor satisfies all legal requirements, goes through this renewal process with the clerk, is there past precedent that has shown that a counselor on the word of a member of the public is going to hold up that business's license? Is that something that happens regularly at other councils? I'm just curious to what the process may be. Uh, I wouldn't say it happens regularly, but there is certainly a process for that. Um, I, I, as a matter of curiosity and disclosure, I'm actually uh, involved in a suit against the town of Johnston for doing just that for a uh, breakfast restaurant that had their license held up to the point where they went out of business. Yep. Um, and so it does happen. Uh, uh, 
uh, and certainly uh, in any town uh, there are those opportunities instead of doing the laundry list one can get pulled out and if there's a question about a tax bill or there's a question about a good standing certificate or whatever it might be those can get held off for a week or two um, it, it, in my view all that means for you is that it's good practice to do this well in advance of the license deadlines don't do it two weeks before they need the renewal do it a month and a half before so if there is something being held off you have another council meeting to address it um, that's that's my only advice on that but no I think look, I think you're right Councillor Edwards the 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 opportunity uh, remains there even though this is an abbreviated process I think if you make that that wording change uh, Councillor Cook um, you know, the, the public will be on the same same level of notice as they were under the current system and under your rules as they run today they can sign up they can contact a counselor the counselor for whatever reason can pull something off the consent agenda and and raise that maybe it gets voted approved that night but maybe there's some question that that the clerk missed or or that needed to be addressed by the council and maybe that happens in a future meeting but i think that's um it's not uh, you wouldn't be outside the realm of sort of normal operations of councils if you did it that way thank you all right since this is a public hearing um, would anyone from the public like to be heard on this? No takers? Well, in that case, um, so what are we going to do, Trish? Well, um, I actually have a couple of things that I'd like to offer up about this, and then we're, we'll Madam discuss Brett? having a vote. Yes, John? Is the uh, public hearing still open? Because I think we have to ask three times, right? I just want to make sure we're following the process. Well, I'll make sure I okay. ask you more times. Anyone from the public? <laughs> Anybody from the public? In that case, we will close the public hearing. Thank you. Um, it, as far as this goes, you know, my opinion is that we're, we're trying to make life a little simpler for the clerk, for the council, but also for the businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I have to admit, I don't ever remember a time when we've done license renewals and they take, it takes a long time when they're on the regular agenda that any member of the public has ever stood up and complained about a business that was getting their license. Um, and and I'm, not, I'm not sure that, um, that to John's point, that somebody's license can get held up because somebody uh, comes to a council meeting and set has a complaint which is yet to have been verified and if the business meets all of the legal requirements and the the town clerk has verified that the business meets all of their legal requirements i think that the appropriate channel for someone who might have a complaint about a business is to go to the appropriate place in town hall and file that complaint and whether that's with the building officials office or the zoning office or the clerk's office but we've never had public hearings on license renewals and so it seems to me that if we open up pandora's box of um creating a situation where members of the public can come during somebody's license re renewal and they may have a legitimate complaint but they may not have a legitimate complaint they might think they do but you know they may think that there's a zoning violation and there isn't. So I'm inclined to stick with the language that um, the town clerk has put forward, subject to the modification of the asterisk. Um, we we did one time and we allowed them to follow that policy until November when we could revisit that issue. But was that based on a complaint from the public? Right, that it, was or it was an issue that was already. It was based on both. Right, but it was. Complaint, an issue there was that no, no uh, law or zoning law in effect. So we were, right. looked, but, we were addressing it. But that was an issue that was already in front of officials in the town. It wasn't simply a person from the public showed up. It, but was, we, it was something that but was. But we did end up extending it for so many months so we could revisit it. Yes. Would there be any way of how long does it take usually take the clerk to get this stuff that she gets the well a lot of it's dependent upon the licensing register. Use your microphone. A lot Thank of it's you. dependent upon what they're waiting for in terms of the requirements, whether they're waiting for their certifications, you know, what items they need, even their payment. I guess that what I'm thinking is rather than wait till the night of whenever we put these names down that 
we're going to allow them to have a renewal. What if there was a notice posted a little prior to that that the town clerk has received renewal requests from the following businesses? And so people have noticed that that's out there and, and it won't hold up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how they do the notice, but it's just a thought. Okay. Isn't there, a speci isn't there a specific month for all these new in November? So, so everybody expires in November, yes. correct? At the next meeting. At the right. next meeting. At the next meeting. At the next meeting. We will either get these, if we pass this ordinance, we will get them on our, we will get the name of every single right. business on our consent agenda. If we don't pass this, we will get them on our regular agenda with all the stacks of that. It's come up the same week, the same month, every single year, and that's when everybody comes up for renewal. So that's a good thing for the town, for the public to know. In November, all these licenses come up. Every business comes up, um, um, unless they've gone out of business or they're planning to. So, so that's very important. That maybe we could even put on the website all businesses get renewed in November. So then everyone would know. That would be a way for the public to know that that's <coughs> they should speak up before November. Yeah. Does that sound good? What, list yes. all the businesses. Yeah, well, okay. it's every it's business. business. Every, every business, business is up website? for renewal. No, we don't have to list all the business because it's every, it's business, every business in town, in town. that comes for up for renewal in November. Every <coughs> business. Yeah, it's true. Well, unless it's a every it licensed business. Every well, licensed yeah. business, right? Right. But that's all. Answer, but almost everything. But that's all we're addressing. Yeah. But that's what we're addressing. That's what we're addressing is every licensed. If they don't have a license, we don't address it. Mean, that covers everything from gas stations to junkyards to yeah, flea so markets to everything. Every so business in town gets a renewal everything. in November. Oh, okay. So that's when people should have the heads up that if I have a problem, so I should do it before November. Can we move the question? That's um, I'm at, um, I'm wondering if do would someone here like to make a motion? Motion made to move the question. Okay. Well, we don't, have we to don't need. We don't have to make, make the question. Question. motion. I'm asking, <laughs> would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make on the motion on the proposed ordinance. I'll make a motion to um, approve the proposed ordinance amended edition, Article Three, Businesses, Chapter Twenty Two, Section Twenty Two, allowing consent agenda approval for certain license renewals, with the change of, um, on the first sentence, the town clerk. It's authorized to administri administratively renew any license t issued by the, wait a minute. <laughs> after, no. after clerk, is, you put the asterisk. To the extent, okay, I have the arrow there, but I forgot it. To the extent barred by state authorizing statute, if applicable, and I would really like to add to five, um, agenda item to allow for council review and for, Potential Action. public input. Yes. Second. Second. Or yes. Have a motion in a second. Anybody? Any last comments? All in favor? Town Council sitting as a Board of Licensing, David Leonard Cabral, 60 Renault Street, Fall River, Massachusetts, request approval for a private detective license. I don't know if Mr. Cabral is here. So, Gio, I have a question on this. I, I, I'm just not understanding. When I looked up, he, he said he's applying. I have no problem. I just am I'm interested in, um, he cites Rhode Island General Law 554, but that says you, get, you have to get a local licensing authority where principal, principal place of business is located. And his principal place of business is Fall River. So I'm, I'm just sort of curious why, how and why Tiverton gets involved in, and as I said, I don't particularly have a problem with it. I just don't understand how he ends up before us. Because I think he's asking for Rhode, I for Rhode, Rhode Island yeah, license. Each state has a separate licensing requirement. Um, you know, I, I but our licensing under Rhode Island general law is Maybe. in the town of your principal place of business, and he cites his business address in Fall River. Yeah, my, my assumption well, when I saw this was that he would have a, a uh, Rhode Island office or operation. He doesn't Maybe have a the, list uh, of one. 
That's Madam President, president. maybe yes. the police chief could give us a little info on that. He may be familiar with some of these private investigators. I mean, he may have a job Possibly, he's doing here chief. right now. Since, <laughs> since, since, since Sorry, since Chief, Clark to put you on the spot, but I just Clark, figure you probably know Clark more Mello about it than we do. It's not here. I know we've had, good evening, I know in the past that we have entertained out-of-state uh, people who don't have a business in our community a private investigator's license here in Tiverton. We have entertained that before. I have not seen any of the backup on this gentleman, so I'm kind of speaking, shooting from the hip a little bit, that, but I know historically when we have approved private investigator licenses, they don't necessarily need to have a place of business in town. Huh, okay. What does the law say you do? I don't know. I think sometimes what happens too if, and maybe this is the case with this gentleman, if I have a private investigating license or business in town, this gentleman can work for me under, but he has to be licensed, even though he might be listing his residence. Again, shooting from the hip again, not knowing his application and not having seen anything. And, and, and I also, this, this is just speculation, and, and so take it for what it's worth. Uh, but uh, with, with, like many Rhode Island general laws, there are laws that are on the books but are unenforceable. And to prevent somebody from earning a living because of their state of residence would probably be violative of the U.S. Constitution. Um, and, and they shouldn't be allowed to, you know, in some cases you can, if insurance companies and other specially regulated industries. I'm not sure this comes under that. And I think that perhaps you can't force somebody to have a residence or a business or prevent them from working in your state just because you want them to, to lay down roots here. And I think that's probably what the statute had originally uh, contemplated. I'm not sure that's enforced. Talk to the bar exam. In that case, Mr. Solicitor, do you advise that we can go forward with this? I, I mean, it's, I, I, in the absence of, of the town clerk, who obviously put this forward on the agenda with all the, the backup, and she may be well aware of how this law works in Rhode Island, having, you know, done private detective licenses many, many times. But the question now is, do we consider this tonight or do we need clarification? I'm happy to talk to the clerk and look at the statute and, and make some inquiries as to whether there's some something that would tell us that the statute is not followed for good reason. Um, I don't, if he's not uh, here, the applicant's not here, I don't have a sense, I don't know from the clerk's office whether this is pressing for some reason. I don't know if the chief has any, thought, any, any knowledge of that. I uh, have a question, Tish. Yes, ma'am. Denise? Patrick, um, we do have detectives that we've given license to that live in Far River or live in Portsmouth or, or live in Massachusetts. Is that correct? Because yes. I can I can think of two offhand. Yes. And, and we've done this before. This has never come in question before. And I do know, I can think of two right off the top of my head that we've given license to that live in Far River. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be surprised if it wasn't fine. Okay. In that case, can we take this up tonight? Or do you want to wait? Could, I, could I just ask that you move, move it down the agenda a couple items? I'd just like to look at something quickly before I... In, in that case, can I have a motion to, five, to, five. Move this, to move this item to the end of the agenda? So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Your choice. I like the way we did it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we don't have any appointments and resignations. We don't have any bids and requests for proposals on to general business. Uh, item A. Town Administrator Reisma ratification of employment agreement with Joseph R. Kaufman to serve as part-time zoning officer as of November 1, 2019. Thank you. You have in your packet the information uh, on Joe and also an explanation. He actually has been working here for quite some time as he was working for Municipal Code Consulting that was doing a lot of the work in the building and zoning office. So he's familiar with the place and the people and the responsibilities. Um, and I recommend that you ratify the employment agreement. You will be part-time working two days a week in this office. Madam President. Yes, John. Can I make a motion to uh, approve the administrator's request to ratify the employment agreement with Joseph R. Kaufman to serve as part-time zoning officer as of November 1, 2019? Second. A motion and a second discussion. Um, yeah, my memory might be wrong, but did, did we say that they would work three days a week? Is that what we said when we first developed this? 
I don't believe so. Well, okay. it, it maybe it was a number of hours or something. It works well, out it was a number of hours, but it was two three full days. days. I, I think they were going to be here so that they'd be accessible. I might be wrong, though. I don't know. I, I think when it was, I don't know. And is the per hour fee based on what a zoning officer would pro rata, what he would get if it was full time? Correct. Okay. It's getting full so, sale. I, I, I will say I did go back and I think I looked at the last one. It was a 20 hour work week. So um, it was a 20 hour week work week in the prior in the prior contract. This says a 19 hour work week and I'm a little concerned about two days a week in 19 hours. So how does that work out? Well, they, they, they can be long days. I, I would need to look exactly. It's up to 19 uh, hours. And I think the 19 and 20 has to do with um, if you go over that, then it's no longer part time. So um, I, I'm not sure that there was a, I don't think there would have been an expectation of three days per week because you would almost by definition be, well, unless you work shorter hours, I guess. It was, I think it was. I think that's what it was. It was three days. And I think I it was um, so six I thought, hours. I thought it was. The, the hourly, short of it, it is. It was an that, hourly rate that he had came to us with, or, and that's what it was broken down to. That's where you get the hours from. The short of it is that in our experience and in the opinion of the building official as well, this will work for at least for the time being. I mean, certainly you can argue that there's a whole lot more work to be done in the zoning area. Um, not everybody wants us to do that, but... Um, right now, this, this would cover it. And if, if there's a need to expand it, I think we should come back to the council. So, so in all likelihood, it will be more like a 16-hour a week position? It may well be, although this, he has worked long hours, and, and so has have people of uh, municipal code consultants that they just work extended hours sometimes. So I under, understand. So the maximum would be 19, but Correct. more likely it's probably... Between 60 and 19, yeah. Okay. In that case, anybody else? Any other comments? We have a motion and a second, correct? All in favor? Uh, next, Treasurer Denise Surrett. Estimated fiscal year 19 transfer to cover for streetlight shortages. Good evening. Um, Excuse me? Yeah. If you recall, um, I had been mentioning this for several months that they still have not worked out the um, billing issue between National Grid and PRISM. However, our last update was, you know, a promise that it'll be coming down in the next month or so, but we're getting too close to the end of the fiscal year and wrapping up the audit. So I wanted to make sure that I set aside some funds for what I believed. I did my best guessing what it was gonna cost. Um, we still have a potential rebate coming as well. So I'm pretty confident that this $40,000 is gonna be enough. Um, I just looked through the fiscal 19 um, final numbers and found an account that had enough to transfer in one swoop over to Streetlight so that if the bill does come, or when the bill does come, I can pay it and it'll come out of the correct fiscal year. That's really my goal here. So what happens to the group health, <coughs> group health account <It's coughs> that gets 40000 taken out of it? This is fiscal year 19. So this is last year's money. This is not the budget we're working on. There wasn't, we had a balance left in um, the group health insurance. Uh, $40,000? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. And actually, uh, <coughs> well, you can explain that as well, but th there has been a history of expectations that health insurance costs would go way up, and that has been a lot less than expected at the time. So that in fact, we had money left in those accounts. That's and beginning to turn around, by the way, just in case people are... You know, all optimistic. It's beginning to go up again, but it, it certainly went up a lot less than at one point was projected and therefore budgeted. And not only that, we were not at full staff last year. We had quite a few vacancies, so what had been expected to be to be spent wasn't. So um, the bottom line is, I wanted to set something aside for um, 
the invoices that hopefully will be coming soon, anything that's left over will go back to the general fund. So we're actually taking this out of the general fund because you've already completed that year's. No, we have not closed the books. Oh, okay, that's what I... Oh. Well, the, the final audit hasn't been, and I've discussed this with them, and they thought it was reasonable. Right. I mean, the All money's right. got to come from somewhere to pay those bills. Right, because we haven't closed the books. Okay. Denise, I do have one question sure. on this ongoing billing thing between <laughs> National Grid and Prism. Is there anything that the solicitor can do to help with this? I mean, is there any... We've been staying on top of it. I know um, you have. Our I'm office, kidding. Jan's been staying on top of it. Um, I think it's been, <coughs> quite frankly, they bit off more than they could chew with converting all of the municipalities, and they definitely uh, focused more on the larger munici municipalities mm -hmm. and kind of working out the bugs there. So uh, I, I don't know if GEO could do I, anything. I think it's generally very difficult to tell National Grid to do something different from what they're doing. <laughs> My only, my only suggestion, honestly, uh, you know, aside from sending some nasty lawyer letter that will get you zero, um, if not, if not have a negative impact, um, would would be at some point to raise this issue with the Public Utilities Commission and to indicate that, you know, in these types of, you know, National Grid doesn't like doing this, right? It's not in their financial interest to do these things. Right. So um, the PUC might be, you know, uh, appreciative of some correspondence from the council once this is complete, explaining what you had to go through. Other than that, I think, you know, legal involvement would just make it worse. Uh, the only, um, we're not the only ones. I'm so, sure not. Yeah. so um, you know, and they've worked with us, but it's just taken so long. And we've given them everything they've asked for. Um, but you can only do so much. Madam President. Yes, John. Yeah, can I make a motion to approve the transfers as requested by the town treasurer? Do I have a second? second. No, I discussion. have a question. Cook, you had a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just curious about the this this extra money in the 29th. Was that last year's budget, do you say? Yes. We're working well, off we of... We have a special account or something? Doesn't it go in the general fund? Like when this Well, I'm going to make an entry to accrue the funds into an, an accrued expense account on the balance sheet. And then when the bills come in, I will be able to have the funds to pay them. Okay. Thank so you. if I don't do that and the bills come in, we'll be looking for it in fiscal year 20 budget, and it's not there. I see. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Nope. In that case, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Now don't go anywhere, I know. Madam Treasurer, because the next item uh, is required. The Treasurer Denise Surrett requests approval and authorization of Council President to sign engagement letter for A. Jahadi and Company PC to audit the financial statements for the year ended June 30th, 2019. This is a typical engagement letter that we sign every year. Um, the audit's almost done, but it usually comes at the end. Um, I don't know why, but this year they have asked that the Town Council sign the letter. So, who usually signs the letters? Myself and the town administrator. Us on TV. <laughs> hmm? I am no longer on here. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I don't ever remember signing this. So no. I thought. Okay, I thought that was odd. And and I see that Jan has signed this. Does Geo? Do you need to look at this? Or. I've looked at it, it's pretty It's fine. <laughs> um, in that case, any other questions or comments? Yes, you may. Does the school become a Yes. So how come we don't have anything to say about what? The engagement letter? I, I, th I think Jerry has asked me that next year when we go out to bid that the school department have a more active role in it. Because this isn't a bid, this is... This is a bid process every three years, every so we'll be years. going this out. This isn't the bid process this no. time no. at all. So no. yes, this and is I do remember Jerry asking that last year or the year before. Thank you. Madam President. Yes, John. Can I make a motion to um, approve the, uh, or yeah, to approve the authorization um, of the council president to sign the engagement letter for Haig Sahadi and Company PC to audit our financial statements for year end 
June 2030, 2019. Second. Motion is second. No other discussion? All favor? Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Okay. Councilor Edwards, discussion and possible action and proposed modifications to town council governance policy. Just scrolling down to it. Thank you. Um, so as we discussed uh, two meetings ago, uh, the topic of the council governance policy came up. Um, I volunteered to make some suggestions. I'm happy to go through those with you or address any questions. I know Councilor Hilton also took a stab at this as well. So I'm going to make a suggestion here so we can get through this as expeditiously as possible. I know that John had some suggestions. I had some suggestions too. And as I started going through this, I actually went back to the council governance policy, the, the prior one. And then I'd made an editing mess, so I stopped and started over. And so my suggestion is this, what you have, and by the way, everybody was welcome to I don't think anybody else did, but that doesn't mean that they, um, did you send something to the clerk? No, I, I don't think anything was put forward that the town council was going to as a body review the governance committee and that people wanted suggestions from everybody. I definitely remember Edward saying, council, Councilman Edward saying he wanted to, he was going to look at it, but I certainly would not say this rose to a level of the town council uh, like a workshop and or, or offering suggestions um, and I know when we went through this back in April and and did in fact um, adopt um, town governance there were many many nights of discussions and workshops and talking about it and everybody was given a chance to make suggestions I don't believe either you or Denise made a suggestion you had comments to make but um, I, I, I guess I, I feel if, if we're in a posture now where we're going to we're looking to review the recently adopted <laughs> April 1 governance policy, I don't think we should be taking action tonight. If you're serious about doing this and want input from people, then I think we need time to do that and set well, a, and set a workshop time to look at it. Well. Um, Councillor Cook, we talked about this. That we, were, <laughs> we, we did discuss this. Um, we did talk about people submitting their suggestions. I know that the town clerk sent out the policy to everybody so that they would have a copy. Um, I know that she sent at least one, if not two, emails about this. So this is on the agenda. The council. What's on the agenda is Edward's proposals. And frankly, yours are not on the agenda. And I don't quite understand yours because they relate to a, a well, governance you, policy adopted you, in 2016. Well, you, you haven't given me an opportunity to, to explain my proposal. Uh, but I, the council has a right, it, every council has a right to discuss, each council has a right to discuss the governance policies that they're comfortable operating on. And so we have this on the agenda to discuss. Um, and we can also take suggestions uh, during the meeting, too. So, um, Denise? Yeah, I just want to say the reason why his name is there is because he's the person who put it on the agenda. But it wasn't just his proposals. He put it, um, and he has the uh, agenda request. It's just the agenda. The person who's asking for is Councillor Edwards. And the subject is discussion and possible action of proposed modifications of town council governance policy. So it's not just John's um, changes, it's everyone's changes. And it was discussed two meetings um, that this was going to be on there. And I know for a fact Nancy sent emails out because I received one. Councilor Clark? Um, yeah, I have uh, some similar concerns to uh, what Nancy just expressed. Um, first of all, I commend Councillor Edwards and Councillor Hillen for taking the initiative and putting these proposed uh, changes forward. Uh, but um, I was a little surprised uh, that they were going to be presented at this town council because I also felt as though I was not um, 
asked to give input or given a timely uh, opportunity to give input. Um, these uh, changes that you and, and uh, Councilor Edwards have proposed, uh, I expect are going to uh, result in some uh, discussion. And it could be a lengthy discussion, I suspect. And I'm sh not sure that it's a good use of the council's time to have these discussions in a uh, public meeting. I think that a, a workshop approach or a subcommittee approach would be a much better opportunity for us to exchange ideas and have a, you know, a good discussion about what we want to change, why we want to change, what are the uh, implications of the changes. And um, frankly, if, it's, uh, if, if I missed the opportunity because I was asleep at the switch or whatever, then I think uh, we should still uh, back up a little bit here and take the opportunity to you know, discuss these changes and to make sure everybody has input. Um, Is there any problem with continuing this and, and scheduling a workshop? Input can be given tonight, correct? Madam President, um, yes, John. just to address some of the comments, I'm happy if we push this off to a workshop. However, um, I would like to see action taken tonight on one specific item in our governance policy. And that's specifically under section E, item number three, uh, the suggestion to strike the words only when no closed executive sessions are scheduled. I firmly believe that our constituents, the residents of this town, have a right to petition this body for anything. And there should be zero restrictions placed upon that. And I would be happy to move the rest of it, provided we make that amendment tonight. I'm so the amendment would be a public forum at every meeting? Absolutely. I agree with that. I would just like to put it in perspective that this was debated and discussed quite extensively at the time back in April. And one of the, one of the concerns we had was that meetings were going on till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night because and, and you have to think about the context. Um, for some reason, our particular town council was subject to a lot of uh, forum requests of people coming up, and it got quite heated and quite, um, quite lengthy and quite um, it just time-consuming. So on the other hand, I don't think I've ever seen a more generous town council in terms of allowing anybody to speak on any agenda item than, than President Coulter was. So to say that the public and certainly people had a right to, and it also happened, so, so there was that balance where um, President Coulter allowed people to speak to agenda items, and he did. He was very generous and gave them all the time they wanted. Um, frankly, sometimes to the annoyance of the council, at least me. But if I may, but on the other Jenkins. hand, and I just want to just finish one thing. Part of the other discussion was, and it had to do with the executive session. And I think everybody who was on the council at that time was very aware of the fact that it was President Coulter's position that the council look at the use of executive session, that there was a lot that happened there that may not have, that may not have to be down. No, 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 just no, no, it's just the balance. It's the balance. You go on and on and on, let her speak. It's the balance. And this isn't what we're talking about, right? John, you want to make a motion? I Well, so I just want to clarify one thing, Councillor Driggs. Former Councillor Coulter is no longer the president of this town I council. I understand that. Now, and, I, and I understand that. And this is a governance policy that affects this town council. I understand Which that. I firmly believe, as I have stated, that it is the right of the public to petition this body at every single open meeting that we have. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to strike that item from our governance policy. And I, I'm not clear on where we are here. Second. I, and I am Section E, item number three. John, I He's second that. And did you want to table the rest of it until? I'll, I'll make a second motion to table the rest, or to, to continue the rest. So can we clarify the page, John, that you got? Yes, it's uh, under council, the existing governance policy. 
Page three. Of exhibit 10 D three. sub one. Correct. So yeah. it would modify three, which now says open forum sessions will n normally be scheduled at regular meetings only when no executive sessions are scheduled. And it would strike the only when no executive sessions are scheduled so that an That's open incorrect. forum will be on the agenda for every uh, regular meeting. Correct. That is my motion. Okay. So we're having discussion still? It's been moved and seconded? It's been moved and seconded. And my only, I will repeat my discussion. If we are planning to continue to have a workshop so the town council can talk about this, I see absolutely no purpose or, uh, frankly, fairness in going ahead with making making a change before we have had an ability for everybody to think about this and discuss it again. So I would oppose it. Let's either Other have discussion. a workshop and come up with a plan the, or not. Yeah. Madam so President, the, okay. the only discussion point that I would add is that, you know, at Councillor Driggs' request, I am happy to have a uh, workshop and push the rest of this off, um, just making the point that I believe strongly, very strongly, it is a right of the public to petition this body. So make and I do argument. not believe that we can go forward without making this amendment tonight. I seconded it. So second. There's a motion and a second. I would like to, I, I would like to point out one thing. There is an email from the town clerk, dated October 22nd, that reads, Councilors, Councilor Edwards has placed the governance policy on the agenda for Monday's meeting. Council President has requested I send an email to all councilors in case anyone has any comments or proposed changes. Please do not respond all and send responses to town clerk. That was sent out on October 22nd. So, the fact that, that this was going to be discussed, was going to be on the agenda, that everybody had a right to participate was in that email. If, if folks didn't understand that email, I, I'm sorry, but it's pretty clear that this council had the intent of taking this up and having this on the agenda. Um, if, if Mr. Edwards is willing to have a workshop, and, and since, since then that's fine, but I do believe that he has every right and, and you know, according to this email, we all should have been prepared to discuss any council governance changes that we were interested in tonight. So there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? The only thing I would say, instead of having a workshop, make it a special meeting so we can vote at it if, if yeah. we want to vote at it at that point. Because a workshop, we can't vote on, I understand. So if we make it a special meeting, we can vote. So, Mr. Solicitor, um, to continue this, do we have to, because it's a new business, not a public public hearing, we'd have to have a specific date to continue to, but this item we do not? This is your governance policy. You can do this as a, a new agenda item, a new agenda for a special meeting, independent of tonight's agenda item. Perfect. Um, I would like to have this meeting as soon as possible. Uh, Recently, the town clerk um, attempted to put an agenda item on and was told that according to the town council governance policy, she couldn't do it, um, which is, is uh, certainly problematic. And actually... That's one of the items that I had struck out of there as well. Under the interpretation of that governance policy, if it's to be interpreted that the clerk can't come to find out, no one can except for the town council or members of the public. So in theory, Jan can't put anything on the agenda, neither can the solicitor, <coughs> neither can any department head, if you accept that interpretation. So I would really like to have this meeting. Uh, you know, John and I both took the time to go through this based on Nancy's email. Um, I do think that everybody was fairly warned that this is, this, this is what we were going to be doing tonight, so I'm a little disappointed to have to be scheduling a uh, yet again, another meeting about this, um, but uh, Jeannie, do you have any ideas on some calendar dates that we can get this done? We have a public hearing on December 3rd for trash. Which is, which is a Tuesday? Tuesday, it's a Tuesday. There was a reason why it was, couldn't be on a Monday night. Oh, because it was John's daughter's birthday. 
Correct. That's, <laughs> That's the second. Out. It's a very important day. <laughs> She's right. one years old. Her first birthday, so we decided to, to yeah, celebrate her birthday. Nice <laughs> I did ask at that time what was available that week, and that week looked pretty clear. It wouldn't have to be at the high school, though. We could do it tonight. We really could. I mean, we honestly could make some of these changes tonight. I am not opposed to I mean, I feel like everybody did have the opportunity and did get fair warning to at least make some tonight. And then if people want to come back to it in six weeks or a month because they think that there are other things. So the thing that I'm very opposed, and I'll tell you, partly I'm very opposed because Patricia's comments are, I can't even understand what she's talking about. It's, re, it's not even relating to the current government policy that's in place. Well, you see, it, the uh, new governance policy supersedes what, what you have. <coughs> Se secondly, I don't know what the hurry is. And thirdly, I believe if you're going to make a change, you say the reason for change. And I don't see any of that. Well, that I could look at. <laughs> well, you, you haven't really given anybody who's taken any time to make any of these changes the opportunity to explain what's here and why they I don't think this is the proper forum. I think we should, I agree with Mr. Clark, I think we should have a workshop specifically that we're all come prepared and people are prepared to talk why they want to make a change and people yeah. are prepared okay. to. In, in that case, in that case, I'm going to um, uh, let, let's let's poll the group. Who would like to go forward with this tonight versus who would like to have a workshop? I'd like to go forward with it. I'd like to go I forward would with as well. it tonight. I'd go forward with it only because we got this October 22nd and I reviewed it. I was thinking we were doing it tonight, but. In that case, we're going to go forward with this tonight because there are, there are there is a majority that would like to go for it. So I don't know why you're ramming this through, Tricia. Really I just true. don't get Donna, it. Well, this is I'm not opposed to some true. of the changes. Donna, this is, Donna, this is, it, it's, that's No, you just want to ram it through. You don't care about what anybody else thinks. And yes, it says October 22nd. And we did look it over. But one of the questions was, is I don't understand why some of the, why some of the changes are being made, but which yeah. this is what we did with the charter well, review. We had reason for change. And what, okay, I understand. No, you always try to shut me down. I'm going to speak because you always spoke. We one never of, shut one of the down. problems we. I am stating going that I think a, it's we're unreasonable. Going a, we're going to take another recess what? if we're going to all talk all, all over each other. The decision has been made. A majority has. You said, made the decision. No, no you don't listen to anybody. The majority no. has. Now what? this is. Now <clears throat> This is getting this is getting out of hand. The decision is being You're made. making it out of hand. I think it's reasonable to have a workshop, I'm but everyone wants to go that, forward. I'm you don't even know for the reason. I'm gonna take that we take a recess again and we'll start in five minutes. Because you don't even let anybody have any say. Are we ready? I guess. In an effort to get some work done, in an, in an effort to get some work done, we are going to abide by, in the strictest sense, Robert's Rules of Order. Our solicitor acts as our parliamentarian under those circumstances. So he will assist us in stepping through this, following Robert's Rules clearly as to who is speaking, when they're speaking, making points of order, and any other matters that fall under Robert's rules. Gio, would you like to uh, start first for us? I, I think there's probably some, I mean, obviously this is, this is a lot, right? I'm not going to recite it chapter and verse, um, but I think in terms of the efficiency of any meeting, there are some very simple points um, that are worth following. And, and let me start by saying the formality and, and adherence to Robert's rules is generally viewed as something that's at the discretion of the, the chair, the president of the council. Um, you know, Councilor Hilton has indicated that she would like to um, look at some more formality here in order to keep things moving efficiently, and so I'm going to try to facilitate that as best I can. Um, I think the, 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 the two or three points that I'll, I'll raise, um, one is that comments need to be relevant to the agenda. Uh, two, actually, uh, my, my favorite point, which I've raised in the past, 
um, the intentions of fellow counselors should never be raised um, when it comes to a discussion. Uh, it is the, the, the topic, uh, the, the motion that is before you, uh, that is the sole topic of debate and not uh, what may motivate uh, 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 something like that. Uh, number three, uh, all comments need to be addressed through the chair and only should be made once the chair has recognized you. So if the counselor has a desire to speak at any point, uh, they should raise their hand or otherwise indicate to the chair that they are uh, requesting to speak uh, and should not speak until the chair acknowledges them by name. Uh, and that way uh, we can have a clear record and we can have an organized debate. Uh, typically, and again this is at the discretion of the chair, but typically each counselor will have one opportunity to speak at each point in the process. Uh, say your piece, say it thoroughly, and then let the other counselors have their opportunity to do the same. Uh, this is not a, a, a debating club. This is a council and a deliberative body. Uh, you uh, each should have the opportunity to say, uh, uh, express your opinion on each matter, uh, but it is not a back and forth amongst the council members. That is not the intent of, um, of, of, a, of a deliberative body of this sort. Um, and so, uh, again, I could, I could probably go on and I may interject um, with other points to keep things rolling, but um, I think if we can just focus on those basics for now, uh, we, can, we can see these items uh, uh, you know, move forward, discussed, uh, disposed of, or, or deferred, depending on your will, and, um, and go from there. Thank you. Um, As I said, my, I know that Councillor Edwards uh, submitted some suggestions. Um, I started to do the same and found myself, instead of um, trying to edit the current policy, I actually went back to the older, and in many cases, they're very, very similar. So um, it was easier for me to actually make the changes or refer to uh, things from the older policy that, that I preferred to the new one. And I think for the purposes of um, moving this along, and, and it looks like a lot, but I, I don't actually think it is, um, I think what we should do is go through or you know quickly review each paragraph or each section, um, determine which things from, um, or which paragraphs from each section we're the most comfortable with and, and adopt those and go forward. Uh, Mr. President, I just ask for my own clarification. Uh, is it your intent to um, move a number of items, sort of categories of changes, or, or is it your intent to try to lay that out as a single motion? No, I think we would do it in, categor okay. in categories so I, people I had the more. opportunity to weigh in on each particular thing. Um, and so could I, could I ask that, that if that is the intent going forward that that you or, or the, the movement uh, prepare a, you know, propose a motion and then start conducting debate on that item so that we have a motion in front of us and so it's clear to all the council what exactly you're suggesting or, or somebody is suggesting. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Steve. Yes. Okay. Mr. Clark. I have a question about the process. So if we move forward with this, what you're proposing, that means tonight we're going to vote to accept these changes based on a red line that possibly is going to have more uh, comments and changes added to it as we go through the discussion? That is possible, yes. If, so if, if, if the counselor, you know, wants to add something or subtract something, that is welcome in the discussion. Okay, well, wouldn't we want to have a finished copy in front of us before we approve it? Uh, the red I, line is not, I don't consider, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. I, let's let let's see how substantial the changes are. They may not be terribly substantial at all. Um, so going forward, comparing the two, um, the overview is exactly the same. Uh, meetings of the town council is the same, other than Councillor Edwards has a recommendation to schedule down to one meeting per month. So before, uh, would you like to, Madam President? Yes. <coughs> Um, if I may, I'll just give some a brief background. I fully expect that we are not going to adopt this change at this meeting, but I feel it's worthwhile for this body to at least entertain the possibility going forward. Um, and the reason being is this body, I believe, should move much more efficiently in the way that we conduct business. And having a single monthly scheduled meeting 
in which to do that agenda, I think would help move that process along. That being said, I have seen over many council meetings where the debate has devolved to a point where the council business drags on and on and on, and I would like to see the council do everything within its effort in order to move expeditiously through the agenda um, and to conduct the business of the town. Um, I will share one anecdote. Uh, when I lived in Newport, as many people may know, um, I attended many Newport City Council meetings, and I very vaguely recall the council president uh, and mayor, Harry Winthrop, conducting a meeting in which they had the regular business of the council. They conducted the executive session. They actually did theirs before the meeting. And then they had an open public hearing on both table games at the casino, and they had an open public hearing on the Breakers Welcome Center, both two very highly contentious issues. And that body was able to move through that agenda within a three hour time period. There is no reason why we as a council here in the town of Tiverton should take that much time, as much time as we do in order to get through our meetings. Can I just ask for clarity, so we, we are, uh, these should be presented in the form of a motion, but I guess in this case you're saying that you do not intend to move. I do not intend to move this. Group, so. I merely wish to express why I put that on there. In, in that case, I'm going to draw a line through that one. Um, so regular meetings of the town council, uh, 2A are the same. Uh, 2B are very similar. Um, I, I uh, would tend to personally uh, like the one from the new government governance policy. Um, that would be my preference. Although I do have a question for the solicitor. I'm sorry, where are we? B. We're on 2B. Um, in 2B, and I have no idea why this would have ever been here, there's this language that said, if such a provisional vote is taken, the same motion shall be placed on the agenda at the next regular meeting for ratification. Is there any reason to have that in the it's not in policy? There. That's in the old policy, but it's not in the policy now. It's not now. in the new one, but was there any, is there any valid reason for that? No, I, I, honestly, I think it's just asking for trouble, trouble? to have provisional mm -hmm. votes. Both political and legal trouble for, for it, put a finer point on it. In that case, I have no other suggestions for 2B. Does anyone else have any comments on 2B? I do, Madam President. But May um, I speak? Under uh, the new provisions that we pass uh, that the public can. This, this, this is, yeah, this is not a public hearing at this point. Um, you know, there is an opportunity in this meeting to speak on issues but I don't, I think that, you know, that would be at the discretion of the chair, I guess, at some point to take any public comment, but um, I don't believe it's required. Did we not just pass that, that the, the forum is always open to the public? No, no, we, we, we passed a motion that there will be an open forum at the beginning of every regularly scheduled council meeting where um, members of the public may sign up to speak I see. Uh, on, a, on a topic in front of the council. That's what we just Thank you, Madam President. The only problem I have is I can't follow along. I haven't seen these. Yeah, they are in. They are in the backup. They were available as part of the council. Backup. Well, and, and and I can you know also citing to Robert's rules, uh, although I can't tell you chapter and verse. Uh, you know there is a, a a provision that says that given you know particularly complicated matters, it is helpful to have a written. A set of changes that is available for review, uh, but I do think, given that you're doing this piece by piece, as long as you clearly state the motion and the change, that that the, the council and the public should be able to follow along um, as as you do this piece by piece. So there are no other recommended changes for two B. Um, two C are identical in both versions. Does anyone have any comments on two C? Two D are identical in both versions. Does anyone have any comments on two D? Uh, that is also the case in that they're identical in two E. Are there any comments on two E? Okay, Madam President, Madam President, would it be good to say if there are no the ones that there are no changes? Would we have any problems with accepting those? 
Would that be okay to do it? You got to do right. each one of them. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily have a vote on anything that's already in the policy. Yeah, that yeah, would just slow, no slow it down, I think. No change. Hmm? So you uh, can just, I'm just in case. Just, just read along and say the ones that there's no just changes. In, just in case somebody, as, as Councilor Clark asked, can everybody yeah. amend anything else? There are no differences in 2E. Anyone on 2E? Bless you. Okay. Uh, under conduct of uh, meetings, uh, those are the same. Does anyone have anything on 3A? Uh, meeting governance is the same in both. That's 3B. Anyone on 3B? And that's the same with 3C. Voting is the same on both. That comes to um, speaking by members of the council, which is 3D. The first paragraph is the same. The second paragraphs are slightly different. And um, there are a couple of things that I prefer about the older version as compared to the new version. Um, one of which is that in the older version, there is a notation about members of the public shall be entitled to speak at regular meetings during any period designated on the agenda for public comments once for a period of three minutes or longer at the discretion of the president. Um, the later policy uh, specifies um, public hearings, open forum, otherwise at meetings. Um, whereas this says any period designated on the agenda for public comment. And to me that seems simpler and a little bit clearer. I also like the three minutes, not that we necessarily enforce it, but especially if we have a big public hearing, something at the high school where, you know, 70 people want to speak. Um, where we normally will give people a time limit. If it's in the policy, it doesn't seem arbitrary, so it's not as though for that hearing we're making up a number, we're just saying. Um, and every once in a while it's a little useful if somebody comes in front of us and they get a little long-winded um, that, you know, we can gently point out, you know, normally you can speak for three minutes and after seven or eight maybe likely ask them to wrap it up, but there's something that you have to point to. Um, so, you know, those things are, are, even though the newer policy breaks it up, it's basically all the same. Um, it, it's all the same other than the, the three minutes and that it just makes it clear that it's anything, uh, anything on the agenda that's designated for public comment. And then other things if, if the president or the council so desires. Now, Madam President, before, before we move on to comments, is there a motion? So, um, well, I'll make a motion on this one. Um, so I would move that, um, that we replace uh, E1 and E2 uh, from the newer policy with uh, five, one, one. On the, from the older policy. So, so just to clarify the motion on, on uh, the, the submission by Councillor Edwards, we have something designated E sub one and E sub two, those two paragraphs will be stricken from the current policy and replaced by uh, the item in, in the backup that you provided, President Hilton uh, designated as 511. Yeah. Uh, but we would keep, I assume, uh, the reference, to, uh, make that E1 in the new policy. Second. I just have a, maybe I'm not understanding this, but the, Newer policy dated April 1st, 2019 says two minutes. So you want to increase it to three minutes? I think members of the public shall be entitled to speak once for a period of two minutes. The, the paragraph in the old policy calls for three minutes. Three minutes. So that would be the new time limit, so along with the other changes. increase the amount of minutes. To increase yep. it to three minutes. 
All right. Okay, because I didn't think that was clear that you understood. So you want to increase the amount of time? To three minutes. Okay. I'm asking that only because you made it sound like there wasn't an end time in the new policy. And there is. We're reverting to the old policy, which was right. three minutes. Right, okay. <clears throat> so are we going to go around the room talking, or how I are we doing I think if this? anyone wants to have a comment at this point, then, then this is your opportunity to comment on this motion. Mrs. Drake? I have a comment. Um, so as I understand it, basically what E51 does um, is it changes it to three minutes, but it also would eliminate the president will generally strive to invite public comment on all open session policy and operational agenda items, and that will disappear. And that's something that I felt very strongly when we did this policy, um, opened it up, it gave the public the right to talk on agenda items, which was not my, my history with the town council in the past. And I think it would be very bad to get rid of that line. Madam President, yes, uh, one comment. Uh, I don't believe that hopes or aspirations have any place in the policy. What? I, I didn't hear what you I'm said. I'm not sure I understood what, the relevance of that. I don't understand the relevance of that. Uh, anybody else who hasn't would like to make a comment? Denise, you wanted to, if, it, if everybody has spoken once, then Denise, you asked. Yeah, I'm just reading what, what Nancy is saying, but 5 1. Is that all right if I speak again? I, I, if she allows, just yeah. to go back to my original comment, the, the process is that everyone should have a comment. This should not necessarily be a debate amongst the members. Um, and if there is something new to offer, I, I, you know, obviously the president has the discretion, but I would just watch out, uh, you know, uh, be cautious. I guess I'm opening up. I, I'm, I think it's fair that if everybody's had an opportunity to speak once and then everybody has an opportunity to speak a second time to clarify something or ask something, I'm okay with that. Okay, I, I just want to make sure everyone understands the, the policy that you're you're using and that's consistent. That's all. I didn't even hear what I said. Um, did, did you, I, I didn't hear what you said. Um, <laughs> Councillor Cook didn't hear your couldn't hear your didn't comment, hear Mr. Edwards. Could you repeat that so Councillor Cook could hear it? I said that I don't believe that hopes or aspirations have any place in our policy. Hopes and aspirations. Nancy, um, E1, and yes, and never mind, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, if, you, if you address to the chair, the chair can then convey the question to another counselor. Yeah, no, oh, I'm, this I'm is, done. This this is ridiculous. I, if anybody's second, because I have one other second thing uh, about that in particular, I think that um, while I might not phrase it the same way as Mr. Edwards, I do think that the language that says members of the public shall be entitled to speak at regular meetings during any period designated on the agenda for public comment once um, um, and at other times when invited to do so by the president. I do feel that it is a little risky to use words like strive because there are some discussion items that may not be public hearing items um, and it becomes something of a debate as to um, whether or not the public should speak on a particular item. So I'm not really comfortable with that because it's it's not a it's it's not this but, is supposed to be a policy document, not an aspirational document. And I am more comfortable with things in policy that are. Uh, a little more black and white um, and a little clearer, especially, honestly, being the person who has to sit in this chair right now. Um, so I'm less comfortable with that. I think if I might respond, um, at the time that this was, was, yes, can't. No, no, I just oh, was okay. making sure um, that. 
It, it's, it limits it. Generally strive to invite public comment on all open session policy and operational agenda items. And it's obviously subject to time. Time and legal, time and legal restraints. So that, that's but, the striving part. Yeah. Mr. Perry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Madam President. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand what she's um, questioning. Is it, I, the way I read it is the president can ask the public if they'd like to speak on a particular item. That's all they're doing. You're not giving them permission. To, you're asking if anybody would like to come up and speak right. on an agenda item. That's what you're doing. That's what we do now when we, when we have something that we discuss and any comment anybody from the public would like to speak, that's what you're doing basically, correct? Yeah. I, I just wanted to clarify that because that's yeah. where I was a little confused. So there's a motion and a second. Yes. There's a motion and a second then um, that would replace. Madam President, may I speak? Again, it's your discretion, Madam Chair. If you denied for one member of the public, I think it's very difficult to. <clears throat> I, I would agree. Well, it, you're about to make the right to the public to speak in public meetings a lot more strenuous. You're setting some, arguably shutting it down. Madam and President. you're not going to let the public speak on that item? We've already, we've already discussed that this is not, this is not listed as a, a public item. On the agenda but but for the policy program. states you'll strive to allow the public Why to speak. Mr. might you help me out here? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's a, a question. I think you already indicated that, that there's not going to be a public comment period in this. So we're agenda going back item. to the old way that the public can't speak on agenda items then? Now, yeah, but we'll make sure it's reported that way too, just to just Please address the chair. Um, um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Abstention. Um, section two. Um, section two is um, basically already in. Section 511. Oh, you're talking about Section 2 from the old yeah, policy? Yes, no, E2, E2 is incorporated, the same language is incorporated in 511. You, you, you just moved that, that. you just moved that, you just so, adopted that. So that all stays the same. Um, the, open for, the open forum sessions, which we did vote on removing that only when no closed executive sessions are scheduled, so there'll be an open forum at every regularly scheduled meeting. Um, Madam President. Yes, John. Under section E3, I'd like to make a motion to strike the words not for comments on criticisms of or accusations against citizens or personnel other than sitting elected officials. I believe this is no place in our policy. Would you like to make a motion? I, did I not just make a motion? Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. In that case, is there a second? Second. Um, John, do you want to add any comments to that or? Madam President, other than um, I don't believe we should be regulating speech from the public. I, I just don't believe that this has any place in our policy. Anyone else? Yeah, to, to speak? Yes. Um, I, I think, I guess I, a question I always ask when you want to make a change is what, what's the problem? What's the problem you're trying to solve here in your, in your motion? Again, I would ask that we address yeah. all questions through the chair. Put, the president. Could you ask Mr. <laughs> Mr. Edwards what the problem is that he's trying to solve in his motion? I think I don't understand. I, I think Mr. Edwards did explain it, but would I, you like to rephrase? Madam President, I believe that the words open forum sessions are intended for policy and operational issues 
or other items of governmental or broad community interest should suffice. I do not believe we need the addition of uh, qualifications on comments from the public. Madam President, I, I would just like to add there are pla other places in the document that talk about subject to decorum, and I think this goes to decorum because there have been in the past some pretty violent comments and statements made from the public, and that has no place in the town council meeting. Um, <clears throat> I would like to speak. Yes, Donna. From the past and from the present, there was a real uh, a definite reason for this, unfortunately, because of uncivil behavior. One of the first times that it occurred in the past was the attack on Susan Gill by members of the town council. It was quite awful, and they know who they are. The second one was to Brett Pelletier. We also had problems with very unkind, uncivil behavior and statements and character assassination, which has no place. And this is why this was put in to protect the public or volunteers or personnel because there was uncivil behavior towards these people. So if you remove this for some reason, are you then for doing that type of attack? That's all I can see right now is that to remove it for attack. The only reason it was put in was because we have had problems with people being attacked just sitting there applying for, to be a volunteer for whatever board. Uh, we've had um, uh, counselors go after them uh, to the extent that it was so awful, it was embarrassing. It happened not once but twice. And then when I sat on the town council, it started to happen on a regular basis. It was unbelievably awful. So this is why this was put in. If you want to remove it, you do have the majority. You can do as you please. I just feel that it has a real purpose here to protect the public from being attacked, just simply trying to volunteer because you do not agree with them. You go after them. So do what you please. Anyone else? I'm comfortable with having that removed because there is already language here um, that does that. Um, the, the existing language um, under number three uh, it says the president shall enforce order and decorum among members of the public in attendance at meetings. Any person when entitled or permitted to address the town council shall, while speaking, be subject to the same rules and shall be entitled to the same privileges of order applicable to members of the town council. So I, I do believe that the language is already here that not only allows but requires the president or whoever is chairing the meeting to ensure that speakers conduct themselves according to the same rules that the council does, meaning that um, you, you know, can't attack someone's character and you can't question their motive. I, I think that that language is, I think that that language is already here um, in, in clear format. So um, I, I'd prefer to stick with the, the language that actually references um, the same rules um, and, the, and the same privileges. Madam President. Would you? Madam President. Yes, Denise. Wouldn't that have to be a motion to add the old language in then? Because once you take. Number five. Um, it's yeah, actually it, already in number yeah, five. five. Okay. Madam President, would you have any objection to adding the president shall enforce order and decorum among members of the public in attendance at meetings, including uh, not somehow getting that language back in, prohibiting comments on criticism or accusations against citizens or personnel. So, so just for, for, for 
process here, I think what Councillor Driggs is suggesting is a, a request for a friendly amendment to the motion that's on the floor to move that stricken language down to the end of the first sentence of number five. That's mm -hmm. at the discretion of the movement uh, as to whether to accept that as an amendment to his motion. I decline. Uh, when we reach number five, we can certainly have a motion to get to put that language down there. That, that is a, a, also a possibility. So on, so on, so on the amendment for three, there's a motion and a second? Yes. Correct. In that case, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Mr. Edwards says recommend striking speakers shall not be required to provide their address. With the pre Madam President, yes, John. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to amend section or item number E4 uh, to strike the language speakers shall not be required to provide their address, but the president may provide residents of Tiverton with priority in order of speaking um, and insert the name uh, or insert the words speakers shall stake their address. Uh, immediately following uh, where uh, it says the where it says uh, and state his or her full name and connection uh, if any to Tiverton as well as their address uh, uh, Edwards, I'm gonna have to clean that up aren't I no yeah. no you're not, you're not. I, I, I just said uh, there's one word out of out of order there so I'm following the the, the red line of your your uh, backup materials I believe that's what you're suggesting correct uh, you said speakers shall state their address correct you should or shall uh, my motion is for shall shall Mr. Clark. Yeah, is there, is there Madam. Is there, is there a second? Second. Discussion. Mr. Okay. Clark. Yeah, Madam President, I would like to know why this is being proposed. Mr. Edwards, could you respond to Mr. Clark, please? Uh, yes. Uh, past practice has always been that speakers, when they approach the podium, would state their name and address. I feel like it's relevant to knowing that somebody is an elector. Mr. Perry. Yeah, Madam President. Um, I didn't have a problem with them stating their name and they were a resident of Tiverton. I didn't feel it necessary they have to say where they live. Because, you, know, the, the, you know, sometimes, you know, that may affect them in the public. So I, I just, I think stating they're from Tiverton and their name would be good enough, I think. So are you asking for a friendly amendment? Anybody else? I would, I, I, I would agree. I could go along with, if, if, if the movement's willing, with um, <clears throat> that they should state their, that they're a resident. I don't think they should state their address. Um, I agree that maybe that should be um, state the town they're, they're from. Yeah, from Tiverton and you know, resident, town. and their name is fine, yeah. I think. I don't yeah. think they should have to give their address. No, I Madam President, Mr. Consider? I'd like to amend my motion um, to uh, say, instead of speakers shall state their address, speakers shall state their town of residence. And does the seconder agree with that friendly amendment? Yes. Uh, speakers shall state their town of residence. City, city, or, town. city or town. So you would still strike, speakers shall not be required to provide their address, but the president may provide residence that speakers should, speakers should state their town of residence. Shall. Or shall. City or town of residence. Madam President, may I also ask the movement if he would be, I, I like the second part of what was there, for, uh, that the president may provide residents of Tiverton with priority in order of speaking. 
I would accept that amendment. You would. So speakers shall state their town of residence and the president may provide residents of Tiverton with priority in order of speaking. Mm -hmm. Seconder supports the friendly yes, amendment. another friendly amendment. Still have a motion and a second. There's a motion and a second. I would like to comment on that, though. Um, Mr. Can I just ask uh, just one more procedural step? Yes, please. If, if you're prepared to comment, it's not um, untypical that you would make sure that the council members have completed their comments. Fair enough. And then you make the last comment. You have that privilege. Fair enough. And that might prevent future ongoing back and forth. Does anyone else have a comment? In that case, my only <coughs> comment about the priority for uh, residents of Tiverton um, is that I, I think there are people who have reasonable and fair business here, you, you know, business owners, property owners. Um, so I'm, and, you know, are you a full time resident of Tiverton? I'm just, I think if somebody states, their residence and their, it still says in here their connection to Tiverton. So their connection may be that I own a property here or I own something. I feel a little uncomfortable about trying to say, and, uh, and I don't ever remember honestly <coughs> a hearing, a public hearing where the council didn't let every single person, if it was a public hearing and it was open for public speaking, even if the council had to sit there for four hours, that everybody got a chance to speak at least once. So I, don't know. I feel a little uncomfortable about that prioritizing. That if you, I, my my only comment is that, uh, Madam President, I would just in, uh, be clear that it says it's at at your discretion. Right. Um, so that the, your comfort level could be adjusted, you know, as as, as you wish. So there's a motion and a second. All in favor or no? Yeah. I'm sorry, did you have a, Steve had a question. Yeah, what is the wording of this now? I'm trying to keep track of it. I, if I may, <laughs> Madam President, I believe that the, the uh, section four would start with members as it does now and, and the first sentence was end, if any, to Tiverton on the third line. The following line would read, um, speakers shall state their city or town of residence, period. The president may provide residents of Tiverton with priority in order of speaking, period. May. Okay. In that case, there's a motion to second. All in favor? Um, time of adjournment. Uh, excuse me. Second. Uh, oh, I thought you were saying <laughs> Madam President, <laughs> on, I, I, I have a, would like to move something on number five under E5. Oh, five. Okay. And I would like to add um, a com after the first paragraph, first, first sentence, attendance at meetings, comma, including limiting comments on or, cr or criticisms of or accusations against citizens or personnel other than sitting elected officials, which just further defines the kind of order and decorum what's included in that. Is there a second? I'll second it. Can that be repeated again, please? I believe the motion uh, was that uh, uh, on section five of uh, subsection E, Subsection five of section E, uh, there will be a new second. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the first sentence will be modified um, to read: The president shall enforce order and decorum among members of the public in attendance at meetings, comma, including limiting comments on criticisms of or accusations against citizens or personnel. Open parenthesis, other than sitting elected officials. Close parenthesis. Period. So, including limiting, just putting limiting comments. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I want to do it for three minutes anyway. Madam President. Yes, John. Uh, I'd just like to comment that I believe the words, the president shall enforce order and decorum is self-explanatory.
Well, if we put including limiting, people are still allowed to talk, but it would be the president's, um, I think I understand this, that it would be the, the president's discretion on whether it's getting out of hand. <coughs> Which is what it is now, I would imagine, but. But it, yeah. but it just spells it out. Anyone else? I don't have a problem with the concept, but I don't. I would be more comfortable if it uh, if it referred actually back to Robert's rules or said something consistent with consistent with consistent with Robert's rules of. In, in other words. There's something that you could point to as part of Robert's rules in terms of somebody's attacking somebody's character or their motive or as opposed to this <coughs> language. So, so interestingly, Robert's rules limits the body more than it does the public. So there's no prohibition on the public attacking the intentions of the council members. It's only on the council members attacking each other's intentions. So. I'm not sure, I, at least off the top of my head, I certainly can't give you a citation to look to that would do what I think this would do, which is goes a bit further than Robert's rules. This proposed, this, the, the motion on the floor goes a bit further, I believe, in, uh, than Robert's rules would in limiting, giving the chair the potential, the president the potential to restrain public comment. Madam President. I have one final question. Um, perhaps you can really relay this to Councillor Driggs. Is the intent of the amendment to limit the ability of the council to do those things to the public, or is it to limit the ability of the council to say those things to each other? It is. A, it's a. It's attached to the president shall enforce order and decorum among members of the public. In attendance at meetings. That they need to, to be respectful. respectful. That they need to be respectful when they're speaking. That you know they they that they you know they shouldn't attack their fellow citizens or a potential you know board Do you have any suggestions for some language here? I, I don't, and I personally don't feel that you need the elaboration. Frankly, I think that uh, order and decorum speaks for itself, or it should. And I think that there is sufficient room there for uh, anyone who chairs a meeting to apply that properly. I think this is a waste of time. Sorry. Fair enough. I, I, she asked for your comment. Yeah. Um, has anybody not commented once on this yet? In that case, John? I was just going to call the question. But if we're, if we're at that point. Could someone restate the, the motion that is, as it is? The president shall enforce order and decorum among members of the public in attendance at meetings, comma, including limiting comments on criticisms of or accusations against citizens or personnel other than sitting elected officials. Is there a second? Yes. Sorry, a second. Sorry. Sorry. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? So then five stays as it is. Um, the time of adjournment. Um, second. No. Three, uh, yeah, very funny. The time of adjournment, three hours versus three and a half hours.
I don't know if it really matters. We never Actually, do it anyway. I'm just going to withdraw that, and and we'll just stay with the three hours. Um, on the um, on the minutes, um, these are almost identical, other than the mention about um, meeting being videotaped. But I don't think that's terribly important, unless anybody has a comment on that one. The meeting agenda, which is number, which is number four. Um, I don't know why my change didn't show up in italics, but it did. Um, I change that. It says right now, any member of the town council or of the public may request a new business item. Um, and that's how we ended up with a situation where the interpretation was that Nancy Miller could replace an agenda item, uh, an item on the agenda. And so if it says right now, any member of the town council or of the public, and that's what we seem to be adhering to, or that's what the interpretation is, then that means <coughs> the solicitor can't, the town administrator can't. So I'm suggesting we just change that to any person because I believe that anybody has the right to ask for an agenda item. May I speak to this briefly, Madam President? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the, the, uh, the benefit of the language that you have now is that it is very clear that it maintains control within the council of their own agenda. Um, what what I would be concerned about was that um, you you give the public the impression that they have the right to be on any agenda, when in fact the next paragraph makes very clear that it's up to the president and the vice president of the council to set the agenda based on prioritization and competing time interests and things like that. Um, and, and quite often in my in my year here, I've seen items that were not put on the agenda because it was felt that there was not enough time to get through items, and so. I think that there may be a downside to, to changing that language. As a practical matter, to address your concern about the clerk not being able or, or the administrator not being able to put something on, I, I think as a, as a matter of practice, when we've seen these agendas over the, 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 the years, um, that there are often items that say town clerk or town administrator, uh, but my impression was always that that was done uh, essentially at the, the council president's discretion. Uh, and so while well, it may say administrator, it's really the president who chooses to put that on there in that agenda meeting. So same thing with the clerk. If the clerk asks for something to be there, really, you're, you're the filter or the vice president's the filter in the, in, the, in the agenda meeting. I would just caution that you might either lose some control over your own agenda or, um, or be forced uh, to say no to people who have an expectation that may be higher than it is today. Madam President. Madam President. We're all waiting to jump on them. <laughs> so, so I sat in the agenda meeting as the council president when Madam Clerk Put this agenda item on the agenda, and 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 then when it was when it was on the published agenda, two council members insisted that we couldn't properly take up that agenda item because it was listed under the town clerk and she didn't have a right to put things on the agenda, and the <laughs> with solicitor that's, backed that's, and, and the solicitor yeah, backed it. Maybe, so uh, help us out here. Maybe I, I probably should have finished my, my thought a little more clearly. What I'm suggesting is that the agenda say <laughs> President Hilton on any item that comes out of clerk, administrator, <laughs> department head, or, 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 or you know, that's, it's, Madam, Madam I, I'm, not, I'm not wedded to this. I'm simply raising a practical point, I guess, in, in terms of public perception. Okay. Mr. Perry. But my question, Jail, is at that time there was no, no sitting president. president. So she had to hold, put it on the agenda and then hold the meeting to elect a president. So why wouldn't she have the authority to put it on the agenda? Well, uh, there, I'd there, like to say something. Okay. Too. I, I think there was a sitting. No, there was no, none. There, there was it. none. You have a gap there was none. But she called me as senior member of the five that were here. And she said, I need to add this on. Is that OK? Should I do it? And I said, yes, because she didn't have a president. 
she asked me because she didn't know what to do and as senior member of the five it says other places that the senior member if someone's not she asked yeah. me and that's how it was put on maybe I should have put it on under my name but at but that's not the way we well, we have done things no no I understand practice. and I, again I'm not I'm not trying to take a position on this one way or the other I just wanted to you know, make the point that count, you know bodies need to control their agendas, and, and and it can get very difficult when you have to say no to the public if they think they have that right. right. Um, I I think that's a great point, though, and I would perhaps think about amending this next paragraph to say the president, the vice president, or in absence of both the senior member. It says something about who conducts the meeting would be a senior member if both were absent. But I don't think so it says it in the context of the agenda, which would probably right. be a great fix for future discussion. <coughs> now, let, let's go back to our order here. Um, who, who else would like to speak on this? Okay. Um, well, I, I, I would. I'm sorry. I, I guess I, I would listen to Geo's concern that potentially to put the language you're thinking about makes it sound like anyone has the right to be on, and that's just not true. Madam President. Yes, Denise. <laughs> when you write, any person may request, that doesn't mean the request will be granted. So it doesn't say any, any person may be on the agenda. It just says a request for the agenda. So during the agenda meetings, if the president decides, no, I don't think it should be here, maybe two meetings from now, or maybe we could do it without it. So it doesn't say, well, this doesn't mean, this is not written in stone, they will be on the agenda. It says it's just a request. Absolutely true. Okay. Yeah, my concern wasn't what it meant, it was just the way it might be viewed. Right. I would also point out to the solicitor that the agenda request form is on the website, and it just says, town council agenda request, if you'd like to put, I mean, we invite people to do that now we post it and say that if you want to be on the town council agenda fill out this form and give it to the clerk so um so i'm i am comfortable with may because i don't ever want to be in the position that we were the last time where somebody indicated that that only a town council pre only the town council or um a member of the public could because this says, the other one says, any member of the public can. It, the, the old one says, the public, anyone, the old one says, any member of the town council or any member of the public. And that's how Nancy's request ended up getting denied because she's not a member of the town council or a member of the public. So that's why I'm comfortable with the language anyone may. And other than that, the rest of the, um, the, the rest of it is, is basically identical up until uh, John's proposed amendment. Madam President, um, if I may, I just put that in there because I think we should save trees where we can. Uh, but do we have a, an amendment or a motion on the floor? Did you, so, did you make a motion? I, I'll make I a motion. just want to make one comment before we do that. Are we back on the agenda thing? Anyone? Is that the motion that's about to be made? Any person. Okay. Can. Um, I just want to remind everybody that the context of my objection was both that she didn't fall within the town council or the public, but also that there was at that time no town council president or designee um, to pre prepare the agenda. It was a very strange time. So for those reasons, it wasn't just that. Do we do we have a mo is there a motion? So, I have I have a motion to change the first paragraph um, of this to say that uh, any person may request to be placed on the agenda. Second. And, um, and then we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? The key word is request. Request. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Um, I think the rest of it is, um, is basically the same. 
Um, John, your <coughs> this soft copy thing, did you? Don't worry about it. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that. Madam President, did, did you want to take the opportunity to add in the most senior member to the first sentence in the next paragraph? I don't know if we'll ever run into that again, but. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I think I think the only other part of this and I did talk with the town I did speak with the town clerk on this is at the end of at the end of this um, as far as the availability That's all the same items added during the meeting are the same. Does anybody have anything on that one? Nope. Um, so all, the only thing that we're we're the only thing we're changing is on that one is to any person is to change that to any person. The rest of it, the rest of the whole thing stays the same. Well, we're, 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 we're striking. Could I just? Could, on, on, on yeah. We're making the changes to, to that one. Yeah. 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 Um, I think most of the rest of this all stays the same, except for C, which is John suggested change in the consent agenda, which changes it from um, considered after the consent agenda, not at the very end of the Madam President, yes. I'd like to make a motion to strike the words all other agenda items and replace that with the consent agenda. I firmly believe that we have an item on the consent agenda, such as a notification from somebody uh, or from one of our bodies or somebody from the planning board, for instance, we pull meeting minutes off and we are looking for input from a member of that board who has volunteered additional time to come to our meetings. They should be considered first. Second. Discussion? I just remind the reason that was changed. Um, we, j we found that the meetings were the, the agenda was very full, um, and sometimes you would end up spending an hour on the consent agenda for whatever reason, and it just seemed like it, we didn't get to the other business, so that's why we did that. May I say something? Yes, Denise. I always felt bad for the poor um, department head when we pulled one of their consent agendas and, and they had to stay here until 11 o'clock at night until we get back to it. So I just thought it would be best that I think it's best that we deal with it as it comes up. Anyone else have a comment? There's a motion and a second. All in favor? <coughs> the Accusal items are, are the same unless anybody has anything on that. Um, and so the clerk of the council uh, is the same other than John's preference should be given to employees of the town clerk's office. Madam President, um, I'm going to skip over this but because I, I think we should think about this a little bit further. But uh, it left it open to us appointing some random person if, uh, at least in my interpretation, the town clerk or clerk of the council was not available. Just want to prevent us enlisting somebody like Marsha, for instance. She did a good job. Well, do you feel strongly about enough about this? No. Motion? No. Okay. In that case, we'll leave it the way it is, unless anybody else wants to change it. Um, um, 
Other support? I don't see anything this. Um, I did add one thing, though, here under actions by the president. Um, and I would like to add a sentence at the end that says, action by the president under this policy shall not be in conflict with the town charter. And I wanted to point that out specifically um, because um, it's occurred to me and has slightly come to my attention that there um, may have been decisions that have been made by the president that I think rightfully should have been made by the town council. Um, and that includes recently expenditure of funds and other decisions that I believe that the council should have made. So um, the charter is very, very clear about the council's role and it's very clear about um, the authority for expenditures and all those other kinds of things. So I would like to include this line, even though it's in the charter, as a reminder for whoever uh, is the president or the vice president, that there's nothing in the council governance policy um, that, that allows the president to have any more authority other than what is granted in the charter, which is actually Can I, can I, can I make it, I, th I think you're referring to the conversation we had in the past whether we could um, use money from the general fund Actually, and Mrs. Drake, and, I'm not referring to that. Okay, fine. But my would just what would like to point out that this this is already controlled. The the language I don't think you have to add that statement. This policy is not meant to and shall be interpreted not to conflict with the town charter. The open meetings, all the Rhode Island, it's our, the, everybody is subject to the town charter. I think it's. Anyone else? I think it's. Did you make a motion? I made a motion. Did I make a motion? Did, did you get a second? Well, then you better officially make a motion. All right. I, well, then I'll make a motion. We add the line, actions by the president under this policy shall not be in conflict with the town charter. Second. Uh, motion to second. Anybody else with a comment? Yeah, it's not, it's not needed. It's under coordination. It's very clear. Why would you have it? Oh. Donna, I think wouldn't hurt to put it there. It's there. We've got a motion to second. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Oh, this one that is not Yeah, I have no. I'm fine. I'm fine with not addressing that. Does anyone Good. else have anything that they would like to add or suggest? Madam President, um, just a couple of items. Again, I didn't have official language for our policy, but I thought that this body should consider them at some point. Um, the items that I put in here, the two ones that I believe are pressing that are not contemplated by this policy are number one, policy for the council to utilize official government emails, town council emails, when conducting town council business, um, just to prevent uh, any issues with utilizing personal emails. I know on occasion I have been, uh, I've received emails to my personal address from constituents, which I then always forward on to my council email, so there is a record. Um, want to make sure that we're all following that policy. I'm not sure what that language might look like. And then number two, um, again, I've seen this happen in Newport. Uh, that I believe that we should have some form of a policy uh, to uh, enforce members paying attention to the discussion and not looking down at cell phones or utilizing cell phones to communicate with other members who other uh, members of the public who may not be afforded the opportunity based on the discussion to be involved in the discussion. Um, and I just think it's disrespectful to the rest of the council if we are not paying attention to one, other, one another. And it's disrespectful to the community if we're not engaged in the, in the discussion. Again, I don't have any suggestions for language, but I think these are two things that we should contemplate at some point in the future, if not tonight.
Does anyone else have any comments on that, those ideas? Um, I would be curious uh, for an opinion from the town solicitor as to a policy on using town email, which there may be some benefit to. It's not necessarily an answer tonight. Um, and I uh, would also be curious about a policy, if not, I mean, a lot of us use our phones and our um, iPads for documents, you know, we don't bring our charters or things with us because we have them on our phones. But I am a little curious about what the implications are of text conversations or emails that are going back and forth between potentially between counselors during a council during what is a hearing open council meeting and whether or not that disadvantages uh, constituents who don't have the opportunity to participate and whether or not we should that are some sort of policies on those things. I, I can I can speak to two of those points because I, I think these came up uh, at other times during the last year um, in, in terms of public records requests in particular. Um, the the I, I think Councilor Edwards has a good habit, which is to forward emails to, from a personal or, or other work uh, email that are constituent related or, or town related to his town email to create a record so that if there is a public records request. Um, there is one place to look for all of that and that way you're not obliged as a sitting council member to have to then sort through your personal emails to determine if anything was responsive to a public records request. If you are in the habit of sending every single piece of correspondence, it doesn't mean it's public record necessarily because in particular constituent correspondence is, is not a public record in many cases. Um, but at least you only have one place to have to look. Um, what it also does is it allows the town through its IT system and backups to maintain those public records even once you're off the council. And that came up in a recent request. If a council member or a, or a board of commission member no longer serves, the town really can't compel them to go back and respond to a public records request. They're no longer subject. Um, but in the interest of transparency, that might be something that's interested, interesting to a member of the public that's requesting them. So um, I think that's a good habit. Uh, I'm not sure how you'd enforce it. Um, I think it's it's honestly in the interest of any board of commission member or council member to do that just because it makes responding to public records requests a lot easier for you. Um, so it's sort of self-enforcing in that sense. I think the next uh, component, you know, is, is even more difficult uh, to enforce. Um, you know, you, you can't compel speech. Uh, uh, you can, you know, enforce decorum. And if somebody is uh, has the bad habit of, you know, texting while they're sitting in a meeting, um, that's certainly problematic, but I'm not sure how you would enforce that I think the language becomes incredibly difficult um, you know th does it give somebody uh, uh, you know some constituent a, a right that the person sitting next to him who's not texting the council member might not have maybe um, that 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 constituent and that councilor also have to some extent a right to, uh, to privacy just because you have a, an exception for constituent communications um, not being public records so I, I, I think you'd have to dance around that somehow um, I think that would be um, you know, difficult to, to put pen to paper and draft. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I, I think that would take a lot more consideration um, to, to make sure you're not, you're not, you know, you're, you're balancing all of the respective interests. Madam President, yes. so if someone in the audience is texting to one of us to tell us what to say, and we are reading it verbatim from our phone, does that become public record? Well, if you just read it verbatim, then it is public record. Okay, yeah. that's that's my question. No, I don't think that the message necessarily is, right? I mean, that's different. No, it's, but it's, if somebody is saying, why don't, like, this is what you need to say, and I read it verbatim from my phone, that is now public record because I'm reading something from my phone. Well, because you read it into the record. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Madam President. Yes, John. One more question for the solicitor on that. Um, I think we all recall the, the incident in question where there was a list held up in a, a council meeting that was deemed to be part of the public record. Um, so hypothetically speaking, if I pick up my phone and I'm reading directly off of a text message, does that, does the sender of the text message now also need to be entered into the record? If, you know, if, I don't, I don't think it's as clear as that. I, I think that if, uh, if you're reading off of a, uh, any document on your phone, whatever it is, right? That's still your phone, and how that got to you matters, right? Um, but you know, you're you're allowed to 
get information from wherever you can get information. Right? It's not you're not limited in that way. Um, in that case, uh, uh, if I recall correctly, and I think maybe some people here would know a lot better than I would, but if I recall correctly, what happened was the the the, the correspondence was compelled, but then found to not really be ex a list in, in the sense that would be discoverable or, or, or producible. Um, and so, therefore, it was just sort of a, uh, you know, it, it died on the vine. It, you know, there was never, no, no document was ever produced. He was fine. He so, was fine. He was but, fine. But no document was ever produced. In yeah. the end, he said, well, I didn't need a list. I, I really just, you know, was, was paraphrasing. Again, right? not to rehash the past. I yeah, just, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. As an but, example. So, so, but I, but my, my, my point is just the legal one. It's not the history because I don't care yeah. about the history. Um, and I don't know it, to be honest with you. But I can tell you that the legal point is that, is that um, again, it's an enforcement problem. It becomes very, very difficult. Um, and and uh, you know I think I think the council could get really bogged down in in minutia of things like that. I think if somebody reads something into the record, then it's in the record. Um, how they got that, whether it was something they drafted themselves or they made notes for themselves to read, because it's easier to do it that way. You know, if you prepare a speech, if you prepare some comments, uh, you know, whether that that happened on the fly during the meeting or whether they did that ten hours before for their own benefit, I, I'm not sure what the council gets out of that. You know, in terms of practically moving the agenda forward, Madam President, um, yes, if I just may add, the the genesis of my thinking on this as well, uh, again, dates back to my uh, time attending meetings in Newport, uh, where there was an issue where council members were being or city council members were being uh, messaged uh, by members of the public, and I believe at the time I have to go back and look, but I believe at the time it it actually fell on the on the the mayor to state that anybody who receives a text message would be forced to read it out loud on the docket. I don't know if that's something that, again, is enforceable, but um, it was their practice, and it, and it stopped the, the incessant under the table. I mean, look, even if it's not legally enforceable, shame is a powerful you know, motivator, so I, I, I understand. You know, my, my, my fifth grade English teacher mother understood that you know, uh, implicitly. All right, let's, um, in that case, does Adrian? anybody else oh. have anything else? Well, um, I think in addition to adding something about email policy and cell phone use, <clears throat> another area that we might want to visit is defining the process by which we would revise this document in the future. Beautiful. Uh, um, you know, although I might have missed my cue to give input, it, it appears to me at least four other people here also missed their cue. Uh, now, I'm not faulting anybody for that. Uh, it's my own fault. But in the future, I think we should formalize this process a little more so that we make sure we do get everybody's input and that we have a healthy discussion, as I said before, about the whys and wherefores so that when it does come time to vote on the document, and hopefully vote it all in at once because you know, everything's been vetted at that point. So I'm just looking for a process that will, you know, speed this up and make it more efficient. And I think that's something that we need to, to look at uh, in the future. I think we can, or I, I think potentially the, the Council of 2020 will be able to take up, uh, you know, their, their governance policy as well, I'm, I'm hoping we're not going to we're not going to change ours again unless somebody finds an issue with it and wants to bring it forward. <coughs> why can't why? May I speak? Well, yes. Uh, well, if I'm if someone else is before me, that's fine. No, you can go. Right. I I I don't see any reason why not to work on. Maybe Steve could work on some language to put into our town council governance policy as to what he was speaking to. I don't know if he would be willing to do that. You <laughs> would be totally welcome. If you You've been voluntold, my friend. Yeah, it would be totally yeah, welcome. You, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd be happy to help. I have to make this suggestion. I think that um, it would be good to adopt the policy that whenever the council discusses its policies, it does so at the end of the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would go. like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay. Second. <laughs> okay. So in that case, um, in that case, any counselor who has a suggestion is welcome to bring it forward. 
Um, and we will move on to item E, Town Administrator Reisma, request approval of amendment of the contract for renewable energy services, net metering credit sales agreement with Kearsarge Solar LLC and authorization to sign amendment. I've been waiting patiently to talk about motion. this. Um, the, the information is in the packet for members of the audience who don't remember what this is about. This is about a contract we have for renewable energy services, specifically solar energy related services, whereby uh, that energy is generated somewhere else, not even in town. Uh, but we benefit from it by getting uh, credits uh, for uh, that energy. The, state provides the credits and we benefit from that we have the contract already that was approved the only thing that's happening here is a, a relatively minor amendment resulting from the fact that the school department now has joined in this uh, initiative and thereby the amount of energy that's uh, at play is much bigger which allows <coughs> the company that we have the contract with to improve the discount rate that we're getting, and so it's going from 28 to 30,000 to 30 percent. Sorry, uh, for both the town and the school department. So I strongly recommend that you ratify or allow me to uh, sign this amendment. Madam President, yes, John. I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve uh, the proposed amendment and authorize the administrator to sign said contract. Second. There's a motion. And a second. Any discussion? I have one question. You, yes. Okay. Not, not only myself, but the uh, the consultant that had yeah. reviewed the original initial contract. Um, Any other comments or questions? Will we be giving it to him permission with the motion? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Thank you. DPW Director Richard Rogers request approval to sign new three-year contract to continue service with Waste Zero per the attached. Hi. Good evening. Uh, Jan and Gio might also have comments, but basically I would request approval uh, to sign the contract based on Jan and Gio working out any details because there has been feedback from Jan and Gio on some points in the contract, and we have sent a an email to uh, Waste Zero with our comments, so there'll be some back and forth on that. So, but the basic, um, what this is all about is we we have currently a contract with Zero. They supply uh, the bags and they administer in some way the pay as you throw uh, program for the town. This would allow that uh, to continue. They just had new contract language uh, and that raised some questions for the solicitor and myself that we want to see uh, addressed. But the the nature of the contract is is the same essentially. Um, may I ask one question? When is the existing contract expired? It, it did. It did. Yes. It expired, I believe, in 2017, and it was started in 2011. Uh, it was renewed in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, and expiration date was actually 2017. Madam President, yes. so how we've been has doing there been the has there been any discussion with them about the quality of their bags? Yes, there's, yes. there's tons of complaints that I get every day yeah. while I'm walking around town <laughs> about these bags, and I have to say these bags are poor, poor quality. I understand they're supposed to be more recyclable or whatever, but I mean, I just tonight I opened them and the whole thing fell apart. Uh, the whole white just fell apart on I me. Mean. They, they do occasionally have bad batches. They have modernized their equipment. My personal experience is we do get phone calls and Way Zero will replace them. Uh, and I have thank God, had not had a lot of problems over the five or 10 years that we've had them myself, and I obviously been using them. Uh, but I don't, I don't have a cure-all for the bags, but Waste Zero will replace defective bags. 
Yeah, Are there other companies that make these bags? It doesn't seem to be anybody around that does all the services that Waste Zero provides. It's not just a manufacturer of the bags. If Madam I may President. just add to that, um, the new contract does refer to uh, Waste Zero taking on the obligation to you know, look for the best possible quality. Um, the flip side is that the stronger the bag, the longer it lasts. Um, and so it's, it's a sensitive balance that they're, they're trying to strike. You can't, you can't put 40 gallons of trash in a 33-gallon bag. That's your first problem. No, no. I just took it out of the yeah, roll, yeah, went like yeah, this, like and, and, just and, to, and the straps fell off. I don't know yeah. what to tie. To I couldn't it. tie it. Yeah. It was that <laughs> recent. nothing in it. <laughs> was that recently? This was today. Yes, because we actually had a uh, lady come in, uh, an elderly lady, and she brought them in. The Waste Zero has a toll-free number that they can call, but she actually came into DPW, and the white strap wasn't oh, even right. even yeah. attached to the bag. So we did replace those, and we send them off. Well, I'll be to, there tomorrow. I'm sure you get defects. You, <laughs> I'm sure you get defects. It's like anything else. Yeah. Madam President? Yes, John. Um, I just have a question for the solicitor on this. So does this fall under single-source vendor, and what is the is there a total contract amount that we have to that would force us and necessitate us to go out to bid i'm just i didn't see any total contract value or anything of that of that nature in here and i'm not sure that yeah i, I believe the administrator has, has determined this is the only game in town. okay and they are and I, I can be corrected legally but they are on the mpa for for mass which is an acceptable uh, okay. way to select. Thank you. Just checking. Thank you. Any comments? In that case, do I have a motion, but this would be pending the satisfactory resolution of... Yeah, I think we need to agree that it's the language is acceptable. I'll make that motion. <laughs> pending the resolution. Pending the resolution of the GO and the administrator. Second. Thank you. Don't go away. Oh, well, I'm right here. Don't go away. Uh, DPW Director Rogers requests permission to transfer $3,000 from the minor equipment replacement account to the IT computer services account. Yes, uh, and that is to cover shortfalls for the equipment scan of software, yearly updates, and the regular uh, service calls that we make to the town IT contractor. The when the budget was made, I thought I made it uh, sufficient, but I did not. The software uh, for Mitchell is about 4,700, and the yearly updates for the scanner are about 1,800. And we do obviously periodically need Dave and Alia or his helpers to come in. So we're, we're currently in the red, although we haven't actually paid the $1,800 yet, which what is due. Is there a motion? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve Director Rogers' request to transfer $3,000 from minor equipment replacement account to the IT computer services account. Second. Any other comments? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Drake's confirmation yes. of elected town council's August 18, 2019 landfill process. Um, so you'll notice throughout the body, um, Jeannie corrected me. It's, it was the August 13 meeting, which is obvious. Um, and in the body, it says that. So I just wanted to make that clear. I, the reason I'm bringing this. Um, Councilor Driggs, could you microphone? Yeah, yeah, thank you. The reason I'm bringing this forward is I'm frankly, uh, I am a little miffed about what's going on. As I understand it, we've now, we're, we just are having a, or scheduled a public hearing on landfill options for December 3. And it was my understanding that the town council, this had been dealt with. Um, so I went back through the through the recordings of both the pair workshop and this special meeting um, that 
where Jan presented a, a memorandum on August, dated August 8th. The meeting was August 13th. And where the pair basically went through pair engineering went at the workshop. And by the way, both the workshop was pub publicly advertised and obviously the August 13 town council meeting. So the public was notified of landfill action that the town council was considering. And at the August 13 meeting, um, Jan presented a memo that, and he specifically said he did not want to repeat, go through all the information provided by PEAR. And everybody seemed to agree that the only reasonable option at this point for the landfill um, in terms of the options the pair was giving was to continue the curbside pickup, but there were some other items that needed to be um, determined in terms of how to handle certain recycles, cyclables. And it was at that point that um, Jan requested that the council will hopefully be able to make at its August 13 meeting so that staff, the decisions the council will be able to make <clears throat> so the staffing consultants can move forward with several tasks that need to be completed in no more than one year. And he, he along with um, the DPW director, were going to be exploring various levels of service options for curbside pickup and explore, but, but the decision was definitely made and the vote was unanimous. And I was also struck during both the meetings um, Nobody ever brought up the idea that there had to be a public hearing, that the town council could not take a vote or make a decision until there was a public hearing. No one even mentioned a public hearing at, at either event. Um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I'm, I know I was quite disturbed during this past election cycle where uh, you know one of the allegations was that this council had not done anything with landfill. And I kept thinking that the town council made a unanimous vote to do something about the landfill. So that, that was just a lie. So I'm not sure why we're having a public. I don't think it's appropriate to refer to things as lies. Fine. It, it, but we did, in fact, make a vote on landfill, a unanimous vote. So my question is to Jan. Um, you certainly expressed a, a, a sort of an exigency to get going on exploring this, and you were going to be reporting back in one or two months. And now we're talking about having a public hearing, the purpose of which I'm not sure what the purpose is. And it's going to delay. I, I just I don't understand it. So that's why I'm asking why we're doing this, <clears throat> for that. that we did make a vote. I could try to respond I, if you would like me to. <clears throat> I, I think you're correct in terms of what happened previously that uh, you know, we had a fairly detailed presentation and then uh, a request uh, by me essentially to the council, can you please make the following decision so that we have direction how we can move forward. My interpretation of why a public hearing is uh, recommended is to make sure that we have more uh, public awareness, if you will, than we saw evidence of during these previous events. And, you know, this is typical. You know, it's like you don't hear from the public sometimes until the trucks show up or until something has been changed. And the council had wanted to really make sure that we made another effort to uh, reach out to members of the public and say, hey, this is going to happen now. It's a big decision. There's a lot of financial considerations and, and therefore have another opportunity for people to you know, get the information and speak out about it. Well, that's very I don't different. think it's meant to necessarily revisit uh, decisions that were already made. Then I think calling it a public hearing, if you want my opinion, I think that's very misleading because most public hearings are for the public to give input and then the town council considers their input and takes a vote. Th and that, that I don't have comments on. You need to talk to... Okay. Uh, I mean, why not call it a public <coughs> information <coughs> gathering? Can I just ask the administrator perhaps to clarify just for the sake of the discussion, does, does he, is he still proceeding under the approved memorandum from the prior meeting 
in yes. terms of moving each item forward? Yes, we are. Okay, so go ahead. I, um, I do believe that this is appropriately a public hearing. I also know that when we discussed this in August, there are several components of this to which we still don't have answers or Correct. have prices or know what we're going to do. And I will say that on the record, I, I definitely, sitting through those at the time, talked about the fact that we need to have public hearings on this. No, you did not. I'm sorry. You it, did excuse not. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, excuse me. I have the floor. But I, I did say that. That, that, excuse me, I have the floor, please. That I did say that I thought that we should get this out in front of the public. We should have public meetings. We should make this known to people. And, um, and we don't really have all of the answers. We had a, I, I don't want to call it an interim. That's not the right way to put it. But based on what we had in front of us and the information that we knew, um, we chose a path or a direction. None of that is cast in stone, first of all. Um, very few people were at those meetings. I mean, there, I don't even know if anybody from the public got up and spoke, but there Barbara weren't. Pelletier did. Thank you, Mrs. Pelletier did. So that one person in the community actually got up and weighed in. But I would, I feel strongly that we should let the, the public know what the various options are, what they're going to cost. Hopefully, we'll have some more answers to some of the questions that we didn't have before about what, you know, sort of uh, thing, what we're going to do about this thing or that thing. And I, for one, um, I do want to hear from the public. I do want to hear what the citizens think about what we should do about trash once the landfill closes and what their opinion is. I want public input. But, uh, I, 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 excuse me, Denise, Denise now has the floor. Um, yes, Nancy, there was a decision to follow these recommendations, mm -hmm. but I think the public has every right to hear what those decisions were. Also, we really do need more specifics on this. We still don't know the cost, and we, there was a plan, and we, and I think we need to know how the plan is doing and what this is costing. Keep in mind also, budget season is coming. I think it's very important that the public knows what those line items will be before we do it, and that the budget committee knows. So I don't think it's a bad thing to say to the public, this is what we decided to do. We're gonna do a recycling center, we're doing this, we're doing that. And I don't think it's a bad thing to let the public know because no one came to those meetings. There were one or two people there. I think that it's not that we're going to change our decision, but it's just so everybody knows what our decision is and they're prepared for it and they know what the budget line items mean at the end. And I think it, there's nothing wrong with keeping the public well informed all the way through this process. Madam, Madam President, can I just, on a point of order, can I just interject briefly? Uh, I, I, just going back to my, my initial list of three or four items really should have included one more, which is that Robert's rules greatly frowns upon discussions without a motion. Um, and there is a reason for that, it's to keep the agenda on track. And, and, and uh, this is not directed to you, no, Councilor Medeiros, but, 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 need a but motion? well, well, no, well a, that's, it, that is a it, great it, question. It's and, a good and point. Is, is, I'm not sure if there is, is one. Is Mrs. Drake wanting to make a motion? I, the motion I would make is that because, and, I'll, and the reason that I'm doing this is because I'm hearing two different things. I frankly agree with Councilwoman De Medeiros. I have no problem with the public being informed about the decisions the town council has, has already voted on and made and where we are in those decisions and what it's going to mean for them. No problem with that. I do have a problem calling it a public hearing with the suggestion that they are going to be able to to give input into what we're doing. We're revisiting something that we've already done. Yeah. So I would ask, the, my motion would be that we re, rename whatever this thing is on December 3 as a public informational hearing on the status of the council's decisions on landfill. Is there a second? I'll second it. Madam President. There's a motion and a second. 
discussion, Mr. Edwards. Sure. Um, I'd just like to say, you know, first off, I think if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Um, that being said, as I read through the administrator's uh, memo, uh, it seems like there are a lot of questions still to be answered here, and a lot of decisions, quite frankly, that need to be made. You know, for instance, um, you know, we look at section two where it says that a town operated recycling center where B, preferably on a site that can accommodate yard waste as well and or a future transfer station if necessary, preferably on land already owned by town, but considering privately owned land if necessary. I, I, I mean, even that right there, for instance, let's say that, that we come down to the point and the administrator has no choice but to come back and say, the only way this is gonna work is if we do it on privately owned land and we have to go out and purchase some land. I. I would think that the general public would want to weigh in on whether or not, you know, that's an option that we should move, we should, we should take going forward, and if that expenditure of funds is worth it. If I may. I think that the truth is not even in the middle, it's on, on both sides. You know, decisions were made, but the decisions reflected uh, that a lot more decisions needed to be made. It provided us with the requested direction and guidance so that we could actually use the time and make some progress. Um, hopefully, we will be able to provide additional information. We've been trying to get it. It's been very hard, in particular from the hauler. Um, but clearly, it, the, the memo reflected that some of these things needed further work to finalize them and also to uh, finalize the proportions of you know what goes through curb cut mm -hmm. versus drop off at mm -hmm. the recycling center, all mm -hmm. of those things. And you know, one of the hardest pieces is actually uh, finding a site for the recycling center. So that requires an update at the very least. And a lot of these things have their own financial consequences mm -hmm. or taxpayer consequences. And so to me, it does make perfect sense you know, to have another public hearing, to bring the additional information, hopefully, uh, to the table so that the council can, you know, further fine-tune these decisions. It's not, I believe, revisiting the basics. It's just finalizing the decision. Can I just, <coughs> I, I, I believe the motion is simply to change the name of this event to public informational hearing. Is that correct? So the yes. debate really should be limited to that okay. component? Um, Madam President, as I recall, and my memory's not that good because I'm old, but we, Stop it, Joe. we only <laughs> voted on whether we were going to have a town-operated recycling center or not that night. That was something we had to vote on that night yeah. so we could go ahead with everything else. That's the only thing we voted on that night. No. No. That, that yeah, I recall. We voted to do direct haul to the landfill. Yeah. yeah but and to, to continue to drop off yes. services. Right. The so, pickup. Right. But that's what I recall. I don't recall anything about a public <coughs> hearing or anything like that. That's all I recall. Okay. So anyone else? Um, there wasn't any mention of a public hearing because the PowerPoint and the engineers being here was supposed to be informational and sort of a hearing. Anyone could get up. Um, I don't have a problem having having this, but it it it. It just needs to have the name changed so that it's not like a public hearing thinking that they're going to choose uh, what they're going to do for trash. Call a question. So. There's a motion to call the question. There's a motion to call the question, although I, I second. Did you have more to say, Donna? No, because he likes to shut me down, so go ahead. That's shut right. me down. It's okay. It's fine. Wait a minute. I'm not talking about the name. I don't think you can say he likes to shut me down. That's not he does it all. It's fine. I'm fine with it. There's a motion to call the question. If there's no objection, the chair can proceed with the question. What was the motion? The motion or if the chair, if the chair's discretion, the chair has comments to make. The chair can also yeah. choose to. Do My that. motion was to change. Instead of calling it a public hearing, call it a public information hearing to, to tell the public what decisions are being made, have been made, and are continuing to be made. And if they want to put input, fine. But I, I, I think the minute, if I hear there's a public hearing, 
that's telling me that the town council wants my input so they can now vote on something. And Pear Engineering gave, and I think Jan ended up agreeing with them, gave several options, you know, whether you have your own recycling center, whether you have your own transfer station, all that kind of stuff. And, and we went with the, we, the most cost effective no, was the I curbside pickup. That's what the motion was. That's what she's yeah. telling me. That's yeah. okay. she's yeah, telling me what the motion okay. was. So we have well, a motion. We have a motion, but I am going to make a comment, and, and I'm going to say this. I would like, I think it should be called the public hearing exactly for that reason. I think there are, because the public understands what a public hearing is, and it means we want to hear what they say, and yes, they have input. We are a long way from having all the decisions made on this. We are a long way from even knowing exactly what, what it's going to cost and having put the full costs in front of the public. And yes, it's entirely possible that when those costs come back or when we hear from the public that we may rethink some of those preliminary level decisions that we made. So I feel strongly we should call it a public hearing so that the public knows that we are not only inviting them to hear the information that we have, we are asking them to tell us what they think and to be part of this decision-making process. And I now, guess, there's, there Madam is President, a, can I just, one other thing? No, there is, there is a, a motion to move the question and a second on that. All in favor to move the question? To move okay. the question? Yeah, which means no more discussion. The vote, to move to, it the, to vote. the vote. So there's, oh, a, the vote. there's a motion and a second on the, you have a motion and a second on the table. Yes. All in favor? Of my motion? Of yeah, your motion. Yeah. Opposed? Abstaining? Abstain. Motion passed. Okay. Madam Chair, can I just remind you that we had uh, yes, put off? Our, our, our investigator. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I did, uh, uh, hopefully not to uh, Councillor Edwards' chagrin, uh, use my phone to uh, look at a few other components. I was watching you. I knew you were, sorry. <laughs> uh, a few other components of the uh, relevant state statute. Um, I, uh, the, the, in particular, uh, Rhode Island General Laws Section 5-5-3, the, the preceding section um, to the license application component, um, actually states very clearly that the applicant must be a U.S. citizen. It doesn't qualify it any further than that. So. Um, although I believe that the language that was raised by Councilor Rodriguez is confusing because of the uh, principal place, place of business language. Uh, I, I don't see any state regulation that would further define principal place of business. I think the relevant case law that defines principal place of business is not necessarily relevant to this type of license. Um, and given that the state statute uh, opens this to any U.S. citizen, I don't believe that there's any intention to discriminate against those who might not be residents of Tiverton. So I, I don't see um, any reason uh, for you to hold this application up, and I believe, um, you know, that the, the only question you might have for future uh, consideration is whether, um, you know, you, you might expect somebody who has this type of license to have a place of business in Tiverton or at least some agent address. I would assume they would have to register with the Secretary of State and have a registered agent. Um, that that you know that might be un under other authority aside from yours appropriate for them, but that aside, I don't think that interferes with your ability to approve this license. So, Gio, would he then be authorized to be a private detective throughout Rhode Island? Yes. Not just Tiverton. Correct. Right. Hmm. And, 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 and I just add, most states don't do it that way. Most states have a statewide licensing authority. I'm not sure, uh, you know, why the handful of New England states probably were just special that way. Um, uh, you know, do it this way. Uh, it's not typical nationally to, to leave it to local authorities. In that case, um, is there a motion to um, approve the private detective license for Mr. Cabral? So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Um, Good thing you didn't wait. Town Administrator, any announcements? Um, Jeannie, do you have any announcements on behalf of the clerk? I don't. Solicitor? Uh, only uh, just to, to point you to an email that hopefully you received today or will receive shortly. We did get a response on the public records complaint uh, from Mr. Tom Buchanan um, uh, from a couple of months back. Um, finding that we, in fact, violated the 
Mr. Papra, uh, because we were um, a couple days late in delivering the documents, there was, uh, as, as you may recall, or you can read from the decision, some confusion as to um, a number of similar requests. Uh, I, I would only add in, uh, in our defense, you know, this, the town's defense, that um, this was one of the most complimentary uh, you know, findings of fault that I've ever seen out of the Attorney General's office. Um, uh, and and uh, I believe it took all about three minutes for us to uh, respond to them that yes, in fact, we had violated the OMA or uh, uh, cured it as quickly as possible, but it was, uh, it was there, an oversight. Is there a fine attached no, to this? There is not. And, um, and, you know, what I would, I, I mentioned this not just to sort of, you know, berate myself uh, to some extent, but also to just remind the council that I think it really is appropriate to make some uh, decisions in the near term about management of APA requests within the town. Uh, there are, th th there remains an opportunity for requests like this to fall through the cracks, and, and I think we um, were certainly not, uh, you know, viewed as not doing anything intentional this time. But if it happens again, uh, you know, they did know, they look back 10 years to see if you've done this kind of thing over the last 10 years uh, in their finding of, um, you know, willful and known violation. Um, so this is sort of like your, you know, speeding ticket, you know, good driver record pass. Madam President. Um, just for the solicitor on that note, I, I have not received it. I don't know if I was included in the email distribution. Uh, so I, when I, uh, for your for your benefit of, of yourself and Council Clark, I um, forward these off to uh, Nancy, uh, who I okay. believe is not available today. So it, 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 it will go. It's to all en route, of you, and it always goes to all of you. All communications go to all council members from the solicitor's office. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone? In that case, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye, aye, aye.